Winamac is going to return first. The Cavs will kick. That means they will get it at the half. So we look and see the kicking duties for the Culver Cavaliers is number... 26. 26 for the Culver Cavaliers. That's Caden Baldwin, the freshman. For the Cavaliers. And set to return is Maddox Buzinski and Addison Allen. And we are underway for week six IHSA football from Winnemac, Indiana. And a flag on the play immediately calling it dead. Yeah, illegal procedure there by the uh, Culver Cavaliers. The Cavaliers. So somebody uh, crossed the line there a little too early. So uh, back them up five and re-kick. So a little bit of a deeper kick. They'll have to well, kick now and kick it again. from their own 35-yard line. They normally set the ball to kick at the 40. Now they'll set up at the 35. And moving forward now are the Winnemac Warriors in their territory. It looks like they're, they're expecting this to drop around the 30-yard line. So we'll see here as we'll... Do this redo here. Baldwin, the kick is up away, no flags. It's going to be returned by Addison Allen. He cuts over to the 40, now to the 45. He's pushing his way forward before he's tackled at the 49-yard line. And not a bad place to start, Chris. No, very good starting field position for the Warriors here. And let's see uh, what they come out here offensively. Uh, probably going to come out in their base wing and uh, right I wonder how long team. before First we team. actually see the uh, wing back counter that Winnemac's notorious for. 76 degrees and partly cloudy from Winnemac, Indiana tonight as the Winnemac Warriors on homecoming will start with the ball first. We see trotting out there Max Gearhart to take this. Un no, that is Cash Roth to take this under center here, Chris. So Cash Roth, the quarterback for the majority of last year, takes the snap, hands off. That's Maddox Buzinski up the left side. He's got more than six. Finally tackled and brought down at the 40 in Cavalier territory. That's close to a first down run. Yeah, I think uh, he's got uh, picked up about 10 and a half yards here. Could be a first down. Uh, did a good job of breaking a couple of tackles there. Culver actually had him stopped uh, for about a minimal gain, but uh, kept those feet churning and picked up 11 yards and a first down for Winnemac. Shout out to Paul Dunn. He's part of the chain gang out here at Winnemac. Always love to see Paul Dunn, an old friend of ours who joined us in the spring for some baseball and softball games. But here we are in our game. Uh, Cash Roth to take this under center. We normally see Max Gearhart. A little change here. Handoff. This is Addison Allen, and he got a nice big hole. Six yards gained before he's tackled at the 37, 38 yard line. A nice run. Yeah, pick, uh, pick up there of six yards on first down. Just a little counter there by Winnemac. And uh, a little Second trap down, action and picked up six yards. So staying ahead of the chains for Winnemac. Very good start here for Winnemac offensively. Sticking with Cash Roth in the QB position. He's going to take this under center. Takes the snap, hands off. This is Maddox Buzinski. Cuts over to about the 30-yard line before he's brought down. And it is going to be close here. About a yard short of the first down. Third down. Yeah, so third and short here for the Warriors. Definitely four down territory if you're Winnebac. And yeah, Cash Roth coming out playing quarterback for the Warriors. Uh, kind of a surprise. Uh, like you said, Max Gearhart, the senior, had, had gotten the starts uh, for the previous five games. Well, and we got the email from head coach Josh Burgess for his potential starters. That's how he worded the email. These are our potential <laughs> starters tonight, Mitch. So he pulled us all for a loop. We've got Cash Roth taking the snap under center, handing off. That's Jaden Jones cutting back over, spinning around, and finally brought down at the 25-yard line. A nice a nice run there by Jaden Jones. Yeah, Winnemac, they're pulling the backside guard. Just a little, little J pull there by the guard, getting up on the linebackers and hand off to Jaden Jones and picked up about five yards and enough for a first down. So fresh set of downs here for the Warriors. Now there's whistles on the play. Timeout. Yeah. <laughs> so we're awaiting the official call. We see the head official... Donnie Amadai 
telling Josh Burgess exactly what had happened there. The down marker uh, is broke, so uh, they're trying mm. to figure out how to get it to say first down. Roth under center, takes a snap, almost dropped it, but he keeps his composure. Now he throws over the middle, it's wide open, Jaden Jones at the five! He's fighting his way forward, and he's going to get the touchdown! Jaden Jones from Cash Roth! What do you think of that, Chris? Well, that's the Winnemac offense we had expected all year with all those seniors on the offense. Uh, Cash Roth stepping up, and like you said, he almost fumbled the snap there, but kept his composure and found a wide open Jaden Jones in the middle of the field who fought for the last four yards. But uh, Winnemac here going to line Players up for, line two. for the extra point attempt. So going for two as they did last week against the Blue Jays of North Judson, San Pierre. Cash Roth under center, sets his man in motion, takes a snap. That's Addison Allen up the left side, and he fights his way forward, and he's going to get the two-point conversion. Addison Allen off the handoff from Cash Roth, and Cash Roth like that one. He is juiced up right now. Yeah, just a uh, jet sweep out of that base wing T formation for the two-point conversion, so... A good start here for Winnemac offensively. You know, take the opening kickoff, get a great start fielding position, and, you know, six, seven plays later, in the end zone, yep, eight to nothing on homecoming. Yeah, the Winnemac Warriors draw first blood here for the home crowd. Warrior Nation very happy right now on their feet, clapping along as the Cavs are going to have their first chance uh, at at this defense from Winnemac. You know, this defense we saw last week, Chris, was very impressive against the Blue Jays. Yeah, again, they came out, they switched it up. Basically, usually Winnemac is a base 4-3 team. Uh, you know, in years past, they would play a lot of cover two in the secondary on the back end of that 4-3. Uh, but last week, they came out in 3-4 and did a lot of Warriors. movement uh, with the linebackers, a lot of blitzing of those inside linebackers. So it uh, be interesting to see what they do defensively tonight, whether they come out in that, that base 4-3 cover 2 or they come back out in the 3-4. 42, Ethan Binion back deep for the Cavaliers. So Ethan Binion deep to return for the Cavaliers. Also, that is Jack Rogers, I believe, number 12. And then set to kick this one away is Talon Garner for the Warriors. High booming kick to about the 22-yard line. That's where Jack Rogers is going to return this. Cuts over to the 40. Yellow flag flies, and now he's brought down around the 47-yard line. We'll see what the penalty is on. Nice little return by Jack Rogers. Yeah, it's going to be a holding on Isaiah Gonzalez, number 10. And that was, uh, Ethan, and that was Ethan Binion. My apologies, not Jack Rogers. Ethan Binion on the return. Just saw the number. So Ethan Binion, you know, one of those guys we uh, have heard about from last year and then carried over into this year. Talked to head coach Austin Faust about Ethan Binion. You know, they really are relying on him to, to provide some excellent minutes for this Cavalier team as now we see Jonas McEwen trotting out. The sophomore Holding quarterback for Culver getting a lot of reps this season. It hasn't been the season the Cavs wanted, but when you've got a young quarterback like this, I can assume that only makes you better, Chris. Oh, yeah, definitely build for the future. I mean, with every snap, he's gaining knowledge. So, uh, again, you know, this Culver, Culver football program, you know, yeah, they're taking their lumps this year, but uh, if these kids stick with it and listen to the coaches, uh, they'll be returning the favor here in a year or two. So the penalty backs the Cavs up to about the 26-yard line. It's a handoff up the middle, still fighting his way forward. And he's finally brought down around the 30-yard line. I believe that was, yeah, that was Jack Rogers, the senior on the carry. Well, and we're going to hear a lot from him tonight, we can only assume. Yeah, pick up of, uh, about four and a half yards there on first down and carried three or four Warriors with him. Picked so uh, about three yards on that play. Second down. Second down and... Second down and a long six or a short seven, depending on uh, whether you're a Cavalier fan or a Warrior fan. <laughs> Ball on their own 30-yard line, second and seven. McEwen takes a snap from shotgun, hands off. This is Ryan Beam around the right corner, and he didn't get much. If a yard, maybe a couple, the Warriors snuffed him out around the 32. Yeah, it looked like his feet just slipped out from underneath him. Third down for the Cavaliers. Uh, tried to plan on the inside foot, and when you do that, then uh, Nothing good happens. Needs to plan on the outside foot to make that cut. But uh, Winnemac coming back out and uh, uh, started that formation there in the 3-4 defense. So uh, 
They liked what they did last week and going to try to continue it this week. Third and seven from Shotgun. McEwen takes the snap, fires out. That's Ethan Binion working his way forward, trying to get the first down. Fumble on the play. But the Ethan Binion somehow comes up with it. And it's going to be short of the first down there, Chris. Like the ball may have uh, it's going to be fourth and uh, about a foot, so I would not surprise me to see Austin Faust uh, go for this. He may ask for a measurement. At least I would. I'd ask for a measurement to see how far you have to go. Give yourself a little bit more time uh, to think about it. Official timeout. We're yeah, going to measure it. Official timeout, just like you were talking about. They're going to measure this. This is three weeks in a row we've seen this. I don't think we saw it all last season. If we did, I can't remember it, Chris. And then here's three in a row. Three weeks in a row, we've seen the chain gang have, have to be put to work here. This time, ladies and gentlemen, this, this is smart to the um, on Faust. If Faust actually asked for the measurement, the, the head coach, you can ask, hey, I have that measure. Now, the, the official doesn't this. have to give it to you, but most times they will. And so this is like a, an extra timeout for Coach yeah. Faust. Official mark comes up just and short. And that's exactly what he was doing. He was talking with Jonas McEwen, as you just said that, Chris. Exactly. If he asked for that, very smart, a chance to talk to a sophomore quarterback and get them ready. It looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth and one, Chris. Maybe look for a hard count here. Or, um, I like I like Jack Rogers up the gut here mm -hmm. for, for a foot. Yeah, they can definitely count on a foot from Jack Rogers. He's been providing excellent, excellent play for the Cavs this season. It just hasn't gone their way. Let's see if this one makes it happen. From shotgun, takes the snap, hands off. That's Jack Rogers around the left side. He's got the first down and more before he's knocked out of bounds around the 44-yard line. Shoves a warrior late out of bounds. They wanted a flag, but nothing flies. Jack Rogers just uh, asserting his dominance here in this football game, I assume, Chris. Yeah, he did. Uh, right there, a little extra, little extra curricular activities there on the sideline. Winnemac coaching staff an unsportsmanlike penalty there, but uh, he was just protecting himself on the sideline, so uh, no harm, no foul there. Pick up a first down there for the Cavaliers. Well, and you got to remember, both teams are starving for this win. They, they'll do anything, whatever it takes. We are, we're not here to make friends. We're here to win. And that's what Jack Rogers just said from shotgun. Jonas McEwen hands off. This is Ethan Binion up the right side. He's met by two, three, four Warriors. They read that play well. A loss of yards, I believe, maybe a loss of two potentially. Things starting to get a little chippy out there. Yes, they are. But that, uh, that actually goes down as a pass completion there. Just a little well, shovel pass forward there to Ethan side. Binion for no gain. So McEwen gets the call from the sideline. Head coach Austin Faust is standing about the round, the 36-yard line in Cavalier territory. Second and 10, ball on their own 44. McEwen from shotgun again. Takes the snap. Double handoff. Oh, fumble on the play. Warriors pounce on it, and I think they have it. I think they have it here, Chris. No. No, they don't. Interesting. Ethan Binion was able to get back on the oh, ball there. So, oh, oh, oh. Short uh, loss Binion, on the play. Third down. Binion was able to get back on that ball. It was going to be a double handoff counter there for the Cavaliers. And the play was set up nice uh, if they would have been able to secure that second handoff. But a loss of one. So, third and 11 here for the Cavaliers. So, another third down play for the Cavs. They're going to have to make something happen. 11 yards here. Ooh, and they got the Warriors off sides. There's that hard count you were talking about, Chris. Nice job for the sophomore quarterback, Jonas McEwen, to pull it there. Yeah, free five yards there. So makes it more manageable here, third and six for the Cavaliers. Depending on what you do here, um, you know, Austin Faust might be looking at uh, two downs here to pick up this six yards. I'm liking uh, Jack Rogers to the outside again. Yeah, he definitely gets space, and when he has enough of it, he's going to use it. He's got the feet. As here's from shotgun, Jonas McEwen. He's looking to throw. Here come the Warriors. Hits it. It's a completed a pass. That was hard to describe. A completed pass to number 80, but he doesn't get much. Intended target, Caleb McEwen, Jonas's twin brother. He's able to get a yard, maybe two. 
he had to get rid of it quick as the Warriors were coming fast, Chris. Yeah, Winamax continuing uh, the same same game plan they had last week, uh, doing a lot of movement with those inside backers <laughs> and flying to the football. Excuse me. So fourth down here in Caldwell, yes. I have to go for it. So fourth and eight. Ball on their own 46 from Shotgun. Jonas McEwen, here come the Winnemac Warriors. A deep pass, and it's overthrown. His intended target was number 24, Brady Kindernay, the senior. And it'll be a turnover on downs. That's where the Warriors will take over. Yeah, actually had a step on the defense there. Just overshot his receiver by about the 46 yard line six or seven the yards there. So, again, good shot there. Uh, maybe do that on first or second down, but, uh, you know, fourth down there for Culver, it just shows you, you know, how what they think they need to do to be able to stay in this football game, and that's possess the football. Yeah. Well, we're coming up on five minutes to go here in the opening quarter. It's 8 to nothing. The Winnemac Warriors lead the Culver Cavaliers. Cash Roth under center. He's been the quarterback for the majority of this game. It's a handoff to Jaden Jones up the right side. Nice little stiff arm. He gets to the 30, to the 25, and about the 21-yard line is where he runs out of bounds. What a heck of a run by number 24 for the Winnemac Warriors, Jaden Jones, the senior. Yeah, doing a very good job there using that stiff arm. Was able to break a couple of tackles by Let's using that uh, move there. Nice pickup on first down for the Warriors. Big time run. As now they are deep in Cavalier territory. Ball on the 20 yard line. Under centers, Cash Roth. He's going to take the snap. Hands off. This is Maddox Buzinski up the left side. Now this time breaks a couple of tackles. Now he's still fighting his way forward. Close to the 10-yard line in front of you there, Chris. Yeah, again, just a, just a power play there by the, by the Wolf Warriors. We have a major Culver Cavalier on the field. Looks like that's number 46 for the Culver Cavaliers. Tony Summers, the junior as head coach Faust runs over to check him out. And uh, from talking with athletic director Brian Levin, Leverins, there is actually a doctor here on the field. Each home game for the Warriors, they have a doctor on the field. I find that very interesting. Hopefully it's well, nothing. Flesky Memorial Hospital being right. just a couple miles away. It, uh, and they also provided the scoreboard here at Winnemac right. at Routabush Field. So why not be able to provide a doctor, especially <laughs> in a game of football like this when you know injuries are, are abundant. So they're checking him out. He is down around the 15-yard line. The Warriors are standing by as they help Tony Summers up. And he is going to gingerly walk off to the sidelines boy that is a tough one tough to watch we hope he's okay second down is short. As we ball are going to get back in action It'll be second down one yard to go ball on the 11 yard line eight to nothing the winnemac warriors lead and they are knocking on the door for more 44 yeah. 46 to go chris yeah second and one here look for i look, I look for winnemac maybe to uh, run a little play action pass here and try to put the ball in the end zone again through the air well, Cash Roth, very confident right now in the QB position, under center, takes the snap, hands off to, oh, this is Jaden Jones up the right side. I don't know how he got the ball. Now he crosses the five, cuts back over, and he's going to get the touchdown. It's a Winnemac Warrior touchdown, Jaden Jones. Yeah, wing back counter right there it is. Jaden Jones making several guys miss and being able to find the end zone once again for the Winnemac Warriors. So 428 in the first quarter. Winnemac now up 14 to nothing and lining up to go for two again. Well, head coach Josh Burgess talked about this last Saturday and on the Saturday sports line. He said it's not that they don't have a leg that can kick the extra point. Warriors he said that he just feels that confident with this O-line and this team to get those two points. And 
hey, we've seen Russ Radke. He likes to do that, too, and the Blue Jays have gone for two quite a bit. Here's a handoff for the two-point conversion. Jane Jones, he almost was brought down, but kept fighting his way forward. He gets the two-point conversion, and now two flags fly on the play. Yeah, I'm curious to see what this is. I didn't see anything. Call a personal foul on the Cavaliers. So will that be assessed on the kickoff, I assume? Yeah, that'll be assessed on the kickoff. So Winnemac will be kicking off uh, 15 yards. So he might be kicking off from uh, Culver's 45-yard line. So that makes the score 16 to nothing. As tonight's broadcast is brought to you in part by Nepco Crane and Equipment Services, specializing in mobile crane service. Call Joe Nepp at 1-800-590-2272 for all your residential, commercial, and agricultural crane needs. Today's broadcast is also brought to you in part by First Farmers Bank and Trust, providing state-of-the-art banking with old-fashioned service. We thank them for supporting local high school sports and helping continue the tradition on Kankakee Valley Broadcasting's WKVI. 4.28 to go here in the opening quarter. Both teams have... All three of their timeouts. The Cavs have had possession once. They weren't able to get points on the board. Now they'll have another chance at it. As the Warriors, the penalty is assessed. This moves the ball forward, so this is going to be a deep kick into Cavalier territory, we assume. It's going to be kicked from the Warrior or from the Cavs 45-yard line. So this is uh, going to be deep in their own territory here. Hide on side. That's not a bad idea at this portion of the field. Here we go. And it's going to be a kick that bounces around the 10-yard line. It's picked up by Ethan Binion. Flag on the play. It's going to be around the right corner. He's still on his feet. He crosses the 15 out of the 20. Now to the 25, and he's knocked out of bounds around the 29-yard line. And we'll see what the penalty is on. Penalty's on the field. I think it might be another hole against the uh, Cavaliers. We're a block in the back. So a few penalties here hurting the Culver Cavaliers as that just demoralizes you, especially down 16 to nothing in the first quarter. Trying to get something going and the penalties can just push you back that far. That's unfortunate for them. The Warriors, on the other hand, though, this is the kind of game you want to see early on with the season you've had. This is exactly what you want to have for a, home, for a homecoming matchup. Yeah, it's like they caught uh, Isaiah Gonzalez again with the penalty there on the kickoff return. So uh, well, it's going to be pretty decent field position Cavaliers. for the Cavaliers. Now it's going to be terrible field position. The spot of the foul. Puts us at the 15 yard line. That's where the Cavaliers take over first and 10. Yeah, because that's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. And they had returned the kick to the, about the 40 yard oh line. So gosh. instead of starting at their own 40, they're not going to start at their own 15. <laughs> So first and 10 for the Cavs. McEwen from shotgun. He hands off up the middle. That's Jack Rogers. And the Warriors are all over it. Here's that intensity we saw from them last week. That's number 66 for the Winnemac Warriors on the tackle. He was juiced up when he got that. That's Max Keller, the senior, 5'11", 215. That's the kind of intensity we saw last week, Chris. Yeah, just a good job there shedding the blocker and uh... – Grabbed uh, Rodgers from the backside there in the jersey and just threw him to the ground. So loss of one there on first down. Ooh, a hard count gets the Warriors again on the next play for second and 12. Little antsy there are the Winnemac Warriors as this is going to help the Cavs out a little bit. Against the Warriors, that's a five-yard mark off. So now it'll be second and seven. Much more manageable here. Ball on their own 19-yard line. The, the Cavs have shown us some great plays throughout the season. There was a big-time 90-yard return we've heard about from Jack Rogers a few weeks ago. So they have the capabilities of popping off at any time. Jonas McEwen takes the snap, hands off to Rogers again. He's 
breaks two, three, took three Winnemac Warriors to bring him down. The first tackle did nothing. Flags fly on the play. It's going to be that kind of matchup, I think, tonight. Yeah, that's uh, the face mask, personal foul face mask on uh, Winnemac. So it's be a first down for the Warriors, or for the Cavaliers. Sorry. Face mask to call against the Warriors. Coming up on three minutes to go here in the opening quarter. That's a 15 yard face mask, so that'll give. 16 to nothing. Two quick the... scores from the Winnemac Warriors. They've scored both times they've had possession of the line. ball. The Cavs, this is their second possession of First this quarter of the, the night for that fact. Trying to get something going as they move the chains and get the first down. Ball on their own 38 yard line. Chugging themselves forward. It's Jonas McEwen. Takes the snap, hands off to Jack Rogers again. He breaks through the middle, and he gets a nice eight, seven, eight-yard gain there. Almost was a little surprised he had that much space, I think. Yeah, again, a very good play there on first the down for the Culver Cavaliers. Uh, the starting to build a little line. momentum here offensively, see if they can continue it. Second down and about three for the Cavaliers. So that spots the ball at their own 45-yard line, second and three. They only need three yards to get. Good positioning for the Cavs here. A much better drive so far to start here in the first. McEwen takes the snap. Hands off to Rodgers again. Skips around. Breaks a tackle. But then he's finally brought down. I don't think he got a yard. He may have lost one. Tough situation. The Warriors have read that play well. Yeah, again, Winnemac brought the house. Uh, Blitz both inside linebackers there. Jaden Jones was the first one to slow him down. On the play, and then uh, the rest of the Warriors just uh, continued on in pursuit and brought him down for a loss of one. Third and five. Under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Mitch Columbia along with sports analyst Chris McGowan down on the sidelines getting all the inside information. We're so glad you've joined us. Jonas McEwen for the Culver Cavaliers takes the snap from shotgun. Fakes the handoff, now it's a toss back to Ryan Beam. Cutting over to the left side, he crosses the 40, trying to get forward, and he's knocked out of bounds by Addison Allen. A huge time, big time tackle at the 44-yard line. Lowered his shoulder and made it happen. Brought down short of the line to gain. Fourth down and about three yards to go. Yeah, so fourth down and three here. I'd like to see Beam get his foot in the ground and get, get north. Um, Tried to outrun that Winnemac Warrior defense. You're not going to do that with Cash Roth and Jaden Jones and, and those guys in the secondary. He did not get pushed out of bounds. The clock continues to roll, so he was spotted down in play. So we are under a minute here. The Cavs taking their time. Now a timeout, timeout charge to the Cavaliers. from the Culver Cavaliers to talk this That's last 49.9 seconds over as today's game is brought to you in part by Howard's Marathon of Winnemac, serving Pulaski County for 44 years. Call 574-946-6894 and ask for Howard or Dean. We thank them for supporting local high school sports and being part of this wonderful tradition. What are you talking about right now if you're down 16 points with 49.9 seconds to go? Fourth and three here, Chris. What are you talking about? Well, right now, uh, figuring out how we can pick up three yards and continue this drive and come away with some points here. You put some points on the board on this drive, it's only a one-possession game. you got to figure out some way to stop this Winnemac offense. But, again, it, it turns it into a one-possession game. So, uh, if you're Culver, first things first. Uh, figure out a way to pick up four yards here. So here come the Cavs trotting back out. Fourth and three. From what Chris and I can tell, they are going for it here. Fourth down, three yards to go. Ball just at the 45-yard line. Here we go from shotgun. Jonas McEwen, fourth and three. Takes the snap, hands off to Jack Rogers there. Depending on him, he gets the first down and more. Crosses the 45, and he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Big-time well, run Rogers. for Jack Rogers. Good enough for a Cavalier first Yeah, down. again, just excellent execution Time there up front by, by the Culver Cavaliers. Ethan Rogers, or Ethan Burgess. 
and uh, picked up uh, a nice nice chunk of uh, yardage there on that fourth down run for Jack Rogers, and he was he was one shoestring tackle away from taking that to the house. <laughs> he was. If it wasn't for a warrior barely getting their hand around his ankle, that would have been gone. And like we just said a few moments ago, these Cavs are able to pop off at any time. Here's Jonas McEwen from Shotgun. Hands off to Jack Rogers, breaks a tackle, going around the right side, crosses the 40, and he's tackled at about the 41-yard line. Big-time tackle, Addison Allen. He's all over the field tonight, Chris. I think one of that got away with the horse collar there on that tackle. So, uh, again, that's going to do it here for the first quarter. So, uh the end of the one, Winnemac 16, Culver 0. And we are going to take Ladies a break with them. Don't go anywhere for sports analyst Chris McGowan. I'm Mitch Columbia. You're listening to so Kankakee Valley Broadcasting's WKVI. Back around a bush field in Winnemac, Indiana, 16 to nothing. The Warriors lead here on homecoming. We thank Farm Fertilizer for sponsoring tonight's broadcast. Call them at 574-867-2441. That's Farm Fertilizer helping to move the bar on yield and crop investment returns. First play for the Cavs is a run up the gut, not much gain. The Warriors were there to stop it as this will bring up third and ten again. Chris, we start the second quarter here. What are your feelings as we go moving on into this game? Well, I, I like what Culver's doing offensively here. They went a little wildcat there and actually direct snap to Ethan Binion. Uh, but uh, third and ten here, going to have to pick up a pretty good chunk if they're going to have success uh, continuing this drive. McEwen from Shotgun takes the snap, rolls out to his left, fires deep over to the left side, and it's going to be intercepted by a Warrior. He brings it back to the 40, now to the 45, and he's tackled around the 49, 50-yard line. I believe that's number 23, Maddox Buzinski on the interception, Chris. Yeah, that was 21. 21. 21. Ethan Burgess. So a big-time interception for Ethan Burgess as the Warriors will take back over in really good field position. Yeah, again, that pass just got away from McEwen there, and uh, I tell you what, uh, got to give credit to 24 there for Culver. Brady Kinderday, I mean, he didn't make the play, but he came back and tried to become a, a defensive back himself as the receiver and tried knocking that out of the defender's hands. Cash Roth under center. Takes the snap, hands off. This is Maddox Buzinski. There he is, and he's tackled right at the line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up second and 10, ball on the 47. Tell you what, uh, Theron Carrington there, the defensive tackle for Culver. That kid is not very big. And, and uh, you know, the other thing, too, about him, um, he's hearing impaired. Right. So he has to look over to the sideline every time and get actual hand signals from his uh, translator. Which is his mother. Did you know that, Chris? Cash Roth under center takes the snap, hands off the Maddox Buzinski up the left side, and he's tackled at the 51 or 49 yard line. 51, geez, been doing this too long for that. As there he was again, Theron Carrington, just like you said. Yeah, his mother is there at practice throughout the week. You see her if you've ever watched or seen some of the pictures on our social media from where I'm at practice. That's his mom that is actually sign languaging him the plays from what the coaches are saying. It's really interesting to watch. I wanted to talk to head coach Austin Faust about it. Hopefully I'll remember in the morning. As here's Cash Roth under center. Sets his man in motion, takes the snap, rolls out to his right. He's looking to throw. He's got to get rid of it. He does. That is number 47 on the catch. A nice play. Talon Garner, he's still on his feet before he's brought down around the 29-yard line. A big-time pass play, and that moves the chains for a Winamac Warrior first down. Yeah, just full back out into the flat right there. I tell you what, Ethan Binion was on an island. Outside linebacker for the Culver Cavaliers. It's one of those deals where do I have the green light to try to put pressure on the quarterback or should I stay in the flat? And I tell you what, he came and, and put a hit on Cash Roth but uh, allowed the flat to be open at Town Gardner uh, making a great catch and great run after the catch. The Warriors charging themselves forward. Ball on the Cavs' 29-yard line, and they are knocking on the door again. First and 10 takes the snap. Hands off. No, it's a quarterback keep up the left side. As they are running interesting plays that are throwing me for a loop, Chris. Well, that was a, a miss handoff there in the backfield. 
that was going to be the wing back counter, and uh, Cash Roth just got a little bit too deep on his uh, drop drop there and wasn't able to complete the handoff to Bozinski. But uh, again, uh, realized what had happened and just put his head down and tried to get as much as he could and picked up about a yard and a half. So Cash Roth from Shotgun, he has Talon Garner on his left hip. He's going to take the snap, looks to throw, fires immediately. That's number seven, Jace Bentle, fighting his way forward. And the ball is loose on the, on the field. We'll see who comes up with it. The Cavs have. So, the, Cavs came up with so Jace Bentle unfortunately fumbled it once he got hit by the Cavs. It was picked up by number 42, Ethan Binion, and the Cavs are going to take over right there at the 25-yard line. So there's the defensive stop they got. Now they've got to be able to come away with some points here. Line, that's where the Cavs will have it first and 10. Well, and the Cavs have been fighting. Each time they've started with the ball has been in kind of – far back in their own territory as this will be at the 25 yard line and Joes McCunin trots out relays the play and they break the huddle now they trot up to the line He's got Jack Rogers to his left from shotgun. It's Jonas McEwen, first and 10, takes the snap, fires immediately, and it's overthrown. Slipping on the play was number 24 for the Culver Cavaliers, Brady Kinderney, the intended target, and it falls on the, on the field incomplete. I don't mind that play call on first down, try to loosen up this Winnemac Warrior defense. Um, you know, right now on first down, they're, they're pinning their ears back and, and, and bringing the house. But again, uh, throwing that play action pass there on first down, may slow down that that uh, aggressiveness against the run. Shout out to Harold Welter tuning in. We so appreciate you listening this evening. Harold, hope you're doing well. Is here in our game is second and ten. Jonas McEwen from shotgun and a flag flies immediately. It's on the ball starts there against the Cavaliers. So that's going to push the Cavs back. Another penalty that just hurts you. That'll be a five-yard mark off. Second down, 15 yards to go. So now we're set. It'll be second and 15. Ball on their own 20-yard line. 8.25 to go here in the second quarter. 16 to nothing. The Winnemac Warriors lead the Culver Cavaliers. Both teams starving for a win as they haven't been able to get one all season long. Here's a snap. Deep pass from Ethan Binion. It's overthrown. It was a toss from Jonas McEwen to Ethan Binion, and he tried chucking it deep. Two intended targets. One was number 80, Caleb McEwen, and the other, Ryan Beam. Yeah, not very often you see two receivers that close to each other, so somebody ran the wrong route. But again, uh, Ethan Binion showing his arm strength there and just uh, had McEwen down the sideline, just uh, overshot him. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just been given a set of keys to a Nissan vehicle with a really cool and calm tonight. lanyard on them. If you check your pockets and are missing these keys, a perfect come evening see me. for football. As here is Jonas McEwen trying to find Ryan Beam on a pass play, and it hits the field. It's incomplete, and that's going to bring up fourth down. I assume they punt here, Chris. Yeah, I think they are going to punt here, fourth and 15, especially this deep in their own territory. But again, I think uh, – I think McEwen and there actually could have tucked that ball up and ran. A set of keys to a Nissan but uh, tried to hit Ryan Beam there and, and just dropped the ball. Tried to run before Please he caught it. Pockets. But again, I, I think McEwen there, there could have tucked up that up and them. picked up some yardage on the ground. Set to punt this one away are the Cavs and deep to return. Oh, Big time snap over the head of Ethan Binion. He's going to have to pounce on it in the end zone, and that's going to be a safety, Chris. Tackled in the end zone, top order safety. Yeah, snapped over the head there. I mean, uh, that was a good 15 feet over the punter's head. So Ethan Binion doing a good job there of uh, being able to cover that in the end zone, and only we giving up the two points, not giving up six. 
But like that, it's 18 to yeah. nothing now with 8.08 left here in the second quarter. And uh, Winnemac's going to get the ball back on a free kick here from Culver. First first safety we've seen of this year. Two points for the they Warriors. are very rare. Kurtz. Get the ball. Warriors will get the kick. So not only do they get two points on the board, just like Chris said, they're going to get the ball. And you see on the far sideline, head coach Austin Faust talking to his Cavaliers, trying to explain what they need to focus on here. You're down 18 nothing, Chris, and you've got a punt away. What are you saying in the huddle? Just trying to stay focused and try to stay positive. Now the big decision here, are you going to kick it, off, kick it like a kickoff, or are you actually going to punt it from the 20-yard line? Yeah, interesting. You'll see a lot of coaches. You'll see a lot of coaches punt it just because it's harder to handle. Uh, it's a harder ball to catch. But uh, when or Culver here is going to go ahead and kick it off. So kicking away are the Cavs, and it's going to be returned by a Warrior. He crosses the 50 to the 45. He's still on his feet. Tackled at the 38-yard line, and that is beautiful position. If you're a Winnemac Warrior, nice little return. Aiden Schooler. Yeah, Aiden Schooler, nice little return there. Returns the ball across midfield, even across the 40-yard line, down to about the 38-yard line. So that's where the Warriors will start this possession. Under center, Cash Roth takes the snap, hands off up the middle, it's Willis Dennis. He crosses the 30, tackled at the 25-yard line, a nice run. Big time run by number six, Willis Dennis, the senior. And we saw a couple of runs like that last week in North Judson. Yeah, again, Winnemac uh, going, going four wide there. Uh, Actually, a two-by-two two formation, spreading the field from sideline to sideline, creating a natural running lane for Willis, and uh, picked up picked up more than 10 yards there on the carry. First and 10 for the Warriors, 18 to nothing. They lead, and they're knocking on the door again. Cash Roth, hands off. This is Jaden Jones. Breaks a tackle, Jayden spins Jones around, and finally brought down at the 21-yard line. Nice little run there by Jaden Jones. Logan yeah, showing some great patience the there. Doing a little dancing in the hole, but uh, great <laughs> patience and picked up four yards there on first down. So Winnemac staying ahead of the chains and looking to put some Pick more points on the board here on play. Second down before, the Warriors. before halftime. It's still got six, uh, just under seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. Yeah, it'll be interesting to hear Josh Burgess tomorrow uh, when we have a chance to talk with him of when they decided they were going to throw Cash Roth in there as the QB tonight. Is here is stepping back, throwing up the middle, and a flag flies. It looks like it's going to be a pass interference. The intended target was Maddox Buzinski. 23, Maddox Buzinski was the intended receiver. We'll see what they call here. Yeah, definitely going to be pass interference there. I believe that uh, was uh, number 24 there that got caught uh, with the extra contact as, the call uh, Brady the Kend Kenderday. That moves the ball down now, right outside the 10-yard line where the Warriors have it first down. So now first and 10 for the Warriors. Ball on the 11-yard line. Under center, Cash Roth takes the snap, hands off. That's Addison Allen up the right side, fighting his way forward. And he is short of the touchdown, but it was close. Right on the second or third yard line. That's where they're going to spot it. Two yard line. So they need two yards here, Chris. A similar play, you assume? Yeah, I'm looking for a uh, just a base uh, power play here. Maybe Maddox Buzinski. Yeah, 
Willis Dennis to the left. Yeah, Maddox Buzinski and Willis Dennis in the backfield under center. Cash Roth takes the snap, hands off to Maddox Buzinski, who works his way forward and gets the touchdown. It's a Winnemac Warrior touchdown, 24 to nothing, as they lead here in the second quarter. So yeah, just uh, an under block there by Addison Allen and a lead uh, ISO block by Willis Dennis. And Maddox Brzezinski is able to walk into the end zone for two yards out. Warriors line up for the two-point conversion. Warriors are going for two again as they have all night long. It's Cash Roth under center. Willis Dennis in the backfield. Roth sets his man in motion. Takes the snap. Rolls out to his left. He's going to have to keep it himself. Fights his way forward and he's going to get the two-point conversion. Cash Roth for another two-point conversion to add to the board. It's 26 to nothing. A breath of fresh air if you're the Winnemac Warriors. A tough thing to watch if you're a Culver Cavalier. Both teams come into tonight winless. Someone's got to win tonight, and right now the Winnemac Warriors are making a good case for themselves. The Culver Cavaliers right now are just having a tough time getting things going, Chris. Yeah, right now uh, offensively having a tough time uh, being consistent offensively. So, um, you know, they've made some plays. They've had some nice offensive plays, just haven't been able to string enough of those good plays together. Mark's Body Shop in Knox is proud to be part of the broadcast this evening. If you ever need collision repair, contact Mark at 574-772-7003. Hey, Mark told me they're hiring. Get your applications ready and turned in for consideration at Mark's Body Shop in Knox. 26 to nothing, under six minutes to go here in the first half. Mitch Columbia along with sports analyst Chris McGowan. We've got an extra pair of hands on the field tonight. Someone shadowing Chris. Want to give a big time shout out to Justin Ruff. We appreciate him joining us this evening. Might be able to see, might be able to hear him this winter, Chris. We're so excited to maybe have a chance of getting a sideline reporter for the basketball season. Yeah, it's going to be nice uh, having that sideline reporter. I know I enjoy doing it in, in the postseason during boys basketball. Um, you know, the question is, I'm going to put some pressure on you, Mitch. How many Tri-Township girls basketball games you got on the schedule this year? All Every game is a Tri-Township game, Chris. We're not doing any other games. <laughs> That's my answer tonight. What what Josh Bur <laughs> what Josh Burgess say? Uh, these are our potential starters tonight. That's right. our potential schedule for this year. Is here's a kick return by Ryan Beam up to the 37 yard line. So, one, Ryan, Beam returns so Ryan Beam gets a nice return there. We'll get some uh, Tri Township girls basketball games on the schedule, Chris. Don't worry, we'll see you in action. We always like talking to you and and picking your brain in the pregame and the postgame, especially. That's when Terry Minix can kind of get, get his little jabs in. Oh, it's already tick. I mean, I can't believe believe we're this close to basketball I'm not season. Kidding. We're we're week six of the yeah. football season. It's I, unbelievable how fast it goes. I almost felt like last season took a little bit more time. This one's flying. As here's a snap from shotgun handoff to Jack Rogers up the left side. He breaks away to the fifty. Now to the forty. Now to the thirty-five, thirty to the twenty-five, twenty to the fifteen. Still on his feet. He's going to get a Culver Cavalier touchdown. Jack Rogers, and there's the play we were talking about earlier. These Cavs can pop off. Quick, and there's six fast ones for the Culver Cavs. Yeah, 62 yards out there, just a just a little sweep to the Culver sideline, to the far sideline there, and, and Jack Rogers makes one guy miss, uh, gets down the sideline, makes another guy miss inside the ten, and hey, look at that, Culver's on the board. So a little bit of life here by the Culver Cavaliers, and they're going to line up to go for two, like they always do. You know, Jack Rogers is as big a guy he is. He is fast, and he showed his speed there on that play. Yeah, he just needs a little bit of space, and that's it. But here are the Cavs going for two. Hand off to Jack Rogers, and he's met by the Warriors. He didn't get anything, and they don't allow the two-point conversion. So it stays 26-6. to six. The Cavs down by 20. The Warriors, first time they've let points on the board tonight. But it's still in their hands right now. The Cavs have two timeouts left in this half. 
The Warriors have all three as we stop at 536 to go here in the first half. That's how fast things can change. You know, if the Cavs are able to come up with a stop like they did in the first quarter a little bit earlier, who knows what could happen. They get on the board again. We may have a ball game before we get to the halftime break. Yeah, right now, um, if I'm Culver, you got nothing to lose. You're down 26 to 6. Why not come out and try to onside kick here? Try to yeah. try to carry some of this momentum over. Because if you get the onside kick, able to put another more points on the board, you get the ball to start the second Jones half. And 15, Addie Allen. Back yeah, with 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 great risk Warriors. comes great reward. You're exactly right, Chris. Well, like Coach Bruce Arian said, you got to risk it to get the biscuit. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, I have an update. Uh, North Decatur 10, Rushville 8 in the first quarter. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't even paying attention to who Rushville was playing tonight, Chris. I appreciate that. We're still awaiting score updates from our area teams. I've texted our contacts, so we'll see what those scores are here shortly. As here is a kickoff, and it bounces out of bounds, and then a flag flies in late. So nobody returns this kickoff. We'll see what the officials have to say from that penalty. It's an illegal procedure, so Winnemac will have the choice of taking the ball at the 35 or 40-yard line or having Culver re-kick. I would imagine with the way Winnemac's moving the ball offensively that they'll just take the take the possession and, and try to put uh, some more points on the board here right before halftime. Warriors will take the ball on the 35-yard line, first and 10. So first and 10 for the Warriors. Cash Roth has been the quarterback tonight. We've seen Max Gearhart all five weeks. Now we see Cash Roth, who was the starting quarterback all year last year, and he's done quite a good job this evening. He's going to take this under center. Oh, fumble on the play. Picked up by Ethan Binion. Now he retreats back to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Culver! And that that's how fast things can change. The Cavs put six more points on the board. A handoff gets fumbled, and Ethan Binion takes it to the house. And just like that, Culver is back in this game. Going to line up to go for two here. Um, still a two-possession game, whether you get this or don't get this. But, uh, again, just like that, Culver's back in this football game. We just talked about it a few moments ago. You know, these are two teams that desperately just want to get in that win column. We're going to see the best of these two teams tonight. I can already Cavaliers feel it. As here's from shotgun Jonas McHugh, and they're going for two, trying to redeem themselves from the last time. Takes the snap, hands off. This is Jack Rogers up the left side, breaks a tackle, fighting his way forward for the two-point conversion, and he gets it. Jack Rogers, 12, Jack and you Rogers see the, the Cavs Cav sideline is pumped up after that one. That's the kind of energy we want to see from them, Chris. Yeah, Jack Rogers was not going to be denied there. Broke two tackles. It was him and two Warriors, and he broke both tackles to get the two-point conversion there. So just like that, it goes from 26 to nothing in a matter of a minute. Yeah, literally. 26 to 14. That's how fast things can change. 26 to 14, the Winnemac Warriors lead over the Culver Cavaliers, and the Cavs aren't going down quiet tonight. They are making noise as they are in their white jerseys with orange bottoms. The Winnemac Warriors are in maroon tops with white bottoms. Now the Warriors are facing a little adversity here where most of the first quarter was all them. Now the Cavs are punching back here in the second. It feels like a real football game here tonight. So the Cavs will set to kick this one away deep to return as Jaden Jones and Addison Allen of the Winnemac Warriors. Once again, it's set to kick Jane for Jones, the Cavs. 15, Allen. Back to receive for the Warriors. Who is that, Chris? I can't see the number. 26, Aiden Herrera. 26. Set to kick. Yeah, Aiden Herrera. Gotcha. Aiden Herrera kicks away. 
Picked up by Jaden Jones. He cuts back over to the 35. Still on his feet to the 37. Now he cuts back over to the right side. Now he's to the 45. Tackled at about the 44-yard line. It took two calves to bring him down. Nice little display of running by Jaden Jones. And that's where the Winnemac Warriors take over for their first down. 5.14 to go here in the first half. They lead 26-14. to 14. We're so glad you've joined us here. I'm Mitch Columbia, along with sports analyst Chris McGowan. The tradition continues here on KVB's WKVI. I'm trying to get score updates. The North Judson South Central game hasn't started. It starts here in four minutes. I'm trying to look for a Knoxville score. Under centers, Cash Roth, first and ten, takes the snap, hands off the left side. Still on his feet, it's Maddox Musinski, still fighting his way forward. And now he gets all the way with some help to the four, to the 46-yard line in Cavalier territory. That's going to be second and one, maybe second and two. The O-line helped push him forward, and that's how many yards he got. A nice eight-yard gain, second and second. Second down with two yards to go. Ball on the Cavs, 46. Yeah, again, if you're Winamac here, you want to uh, send a message here and right to ship, put some points on the board. You know, Culver does get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, that is one good thing for the Cavs since they kicked off to start the game. As here's Cash Roth taking the snap under center, hands off to Jaden Jones. He's going to get the first down, and he wrapped up immediately at the 43-yard line and brought down. That's enough to move the chains for a Winnemac Warrior first down. Clock continues to tick with 4.15 to go here in the first half. We see Max Gearhart. He has been on the O-line for much of tonight. Where he started as quarterback for the majority of this season. Now he is on the O-line. That's got to take some great mental toughness. As here's under center, Cash Roth spins around, hands off, big time run by Maddox Buzinski. He's going to get the first down and more tackled at the 28-yard line. That might have been a 12, 13-yard run there, Chris. Yeah, good run there by uh, by Maddox Buzinski, and we have a Culver Cavalier player down. Tyler Greer involved in the stop for the Cavaliers. And he an is really out. down on the ground hurting. This is not good. This is number... 56 for the Culver Cavaliers. Theron Carrington, I believe he had 56 is what I see. And we were just talking about him a little bit earlier. Yeah, he's in some pain. So now they're going to check him on the field. He hasn't moved much. As the doctor is checking him out on the field, it looks like it's a right leg issue. Yeah, looking at the right knee right now. When you think about knee injuries, the first one that comes to mind is very fresh, Chris. Did you see that Nick Chubb injury this past week? Yeah, I tried to forget it. Yeah, that one was hard to watch, man. That one was real hard to watch as Theron Carrington is going to get helped off the field. He can't put any weight Ladies and gentlemen, for up -to -date information, on either leg, really. And featured stories. Our thoughts and, and prayers are with him right now. Nobody wants to see an injury you like that for someone like myself who's had ACL surgery, reconstructive surgery. Knees are a serious deal for me. And whenever you see a knee injury like that, your heart goes out to him. Really hate to see that. First down, 10 yards. So 3.40 left to go in the second quarter here. Winnemac up 26 to 14. They still have all three timeouts. Culver has two. So a lot of time left. A lot of things can happen. And we will see what happens. Under center is 
Cash Roth sets his man in motion, takes the snap, spins around, hands off. This is Maddox Uzinski. Wow, that was a heck of a play. The hole opened up, and it made enough room for him to move the chains and get the first down again. Maddox Uzinski putting together some great runs on this drive here, Chris. Yeah, the wing back counter there that Winamax notorious for. Uh, just a pickup of about 12 yards there on, on that carry and, and a fresh set of downs. So Winamac first Ball and 10 right from the 17, 17 knocking on the door. Down for the Warriors. You know, after watching the hard knocks uh, with the New York Jets, I kind of like uh, – Kind of like what Nathaniel Hackett, he doesn't call it the red zone, he calls it the gold <laughs> the zone. The gold zone. I told you, to, I'm glad you watched that show. Here's a takes the snap, under center, hands off. This is uh, looks like Jaden Jones. No, that was Maddox Buzinski fighting his way Maddox forward Buzinski for a couple of yards. So you got Warriors. HBO, huh, Chris? Well, I just was able, yeah, I was able to access the, for the, Cavaliers. the hard knocks and, and watch those episodes. And I tell you what, uh, I got to be honest. I actually became a, 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 you know, being a lifelong Bears fan. I hated Aaron Rodgers. It's amazing what a change in uniform. <laughs> and once you get to know somebody, you know how you how you actually like them. Hey, kind of like Dennis Rodman when he joined the right, Bulls. Right, right. I'm I'm very sick. I'm very similar with you on that. Now I have a close friend. He absolutely hates Aaron Rodgers, but I, I like him. I think he's a pretty cool guy. As we've got a timeout on the field. Sad injury there for him with an Achilles injury. Speaking on injuries, uh, four four plays in in the first week for the Jets, and he goes down. You got to feel for a guy like that. But a timeout sees Winamax first of three being used, 26 to 14 as the Warriors lead. Coming up on two minutes to go here in the first half. The Cavs have put in a little bit more effort here in the second quarter. The first quarter was all Winamac. They continue that energy on into the second. And then, like Chris said, about six minutes to go here in the second. It took a minute, maybe two, to get 14 points on the board. That's how fast the Cavs can make things happen. Give them a little bit of space, and they're going to run for it. I have an update uh, from West Central. With a minute 52 left in the first quarter, the Trojans are up 26 to nothing on the South Newton Rebels. Wow. Up to date information, scores, highlights, well, the Trojans are just having stories. another great year. Last year was a very fantastic www. year for the Trojans. You just got to feel great for Mark Call. Been there for, what, a decade now, Chris? Yeah, been there 10 years. Has become the all-time winningest coach there in West Central history. So, uh yeah, that train just keeps rolling up 26 to nothing with a minute to go, just under two minutes to go in the first quarter in Francisville. Got to feel good for the Trojans back in our game. See, here's here whistles everywhere. As now, I believe, the Cavs take a timeout, Chris. Yeah, call, call the timeout the there. To the Cavaliers. Uh, That's their second didn't like, what, didn't like how they were lined up defensively to that formation, so... Smart time out there. You got you got two of them left. Uh, you want to make sure that you keep Winnemac out of the end zone here because, like we've said, Culver gets the ball to start the second half. So, uh, again, a stop here, and you get the ball to start the second half, you put some more points on you're right back in this game. Hey, I'm down here standing next to Hall of Fame coach Tim Roth. Well, why don't you say now, hello? I've worked, I worked my way on over. He's over here standing underneath the goalpost. We'll say hello to it. Go, Coach. Uh, right now, pretty good. Although uh, we got to hang on to the ball, we're going to win this ball game. Our turnovers are giving Culver opportunities that they previously didn't have. So it's enjoyable. I, I see a lot of improvement in our team. Uh, Culver's young. We're basically young too. So thanks uh, for a good ball game. Yeah, I saw I saw some pictures on social media last night. The chat at practice. Uh, you getting the itch to get back out here? Uh, no, 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 no. I uh, I just show up once in a while, see how things are going, and yeah, and make sure the boys are doing their job. So uh, it's a lot of fun just watching. It's a lot easier, isn't it? It's a lot easier. You got that right. <laughs> well, Hall of Famer Tim Roth always provides great sound bites. It's an honor to be able to talk with him. Of course. Uh, a lot of history here in Winnemac for him. As here's under center, Cash Roth taking the snap, hands off up the middle. That is Jaden Jones fighting his way forward to the eight yard line, and that's Jayden where he's Jones brought down. For the Warriors. 
charges. Tell you what, uh, when he got that handoff, I thought he was going to score. Uh, that hole closed in a hurry. Good pursuit there by the defensive lineman for the Culver Cavaliers. He's third down and a short one for the Warriors. So, so third, third and yeah. one here. Definitely four down territory for, for the Warriors. You know, Culver here needs to make a stop, a negative play here to give themselves a chance to get off the field. So Cash Roth's going to take this under center. He's got Jaden Jones and Addison Allen in the backfield. Takes the snap. That was Talon Garner instead. Tosses out. This is a wide open Jaden Jones, and he is going to get the touchdown. It's another Winnemac Warrior touchdown. Jaden Jones, as that makes the score 32-14 to with a minute 17 to go here in the first half. Yeah, just a toss sweep there, and Jaden Jones doing a good job of, of finding the alley and getting – north and getting into the end zone so a nice answer there by Winnemac offensively after Culver put a quick 14 points on the board so this gives the Warriors a little more cushion as the, the Cavs will get the ball the to start conversion. the second half as Chris just said a little bit ago the Warriors going for two Cash Roth under center takes the snap hands off this is Maddox Buzinski and he doesn't get anything. No two-point conversion this time for the Warriors. A big-time stop for the Cavs as that keeps the score 32-14. to The Cavs have a minute 17 to make some magic happen here, Chris. And they have one timeout, so uh, getting the ball to start the second half, I think a lot of it's going to depend on what kind of a return here they get on how aggressive they're going to be uh, right before halftime. Let me remind you that all middle, elementary and middle school students should remain safe. We had to be aggressive, game, but that's not, why I'm down here actually talking about the game instead of actually coaching. <laughs> well, we invite you to stick around for the standard plumbing, heating, and air conditioning halftime show. We'll have a chance to talk to Athletic Director of Winnemac, Brian Leverance, here in just a few moments. We'll catch up with him and hear about all the other sports going on here at Winnemac. Of course, there isn't just football. There's a lot of good news coming out of the golf team. Of course, Bianca Wezar, one of our Tyler Roth WKVI Athletes of the Week, won her sectional. See if she is a sectional champion. So we'll hear all about that, and we'll hear all about the volleyball, the soccer team. A lot going on here in Winnemac, especially. Did you see the new construction down there uh, where the softball field is being built, Chris? Have you seen that yet? Yeah, I was looking at it earlier while it wasn't dark out, and I was actually, I saw the softball field beyond the new practice field. I tell you what, Coach Roth standing here, got to be a little bit jealous of that. <laughs> He's shaking his head big time. But, yeah, the, the new practice field on the football field is just uh, unbelievable. Right. And, yeah, the softball field. So it looks like it could be ready to go by spring. This is Ethan Binion returning the kickoff. Back up to about the 37-yard line, and that's where the Cavs will start the their drive. The last drive of this half, we assume, with one now minute and 11 seconds to go. The, the Cavs need some of that line. magic here, no, and we've seen it already here in the second quarter. Line. They can pop that's off really at any time. So here comes Jonas McEwen, trots out to the line. We have a score update from Athletic Director Neil Minix of the Knox Redskins. Knox leads 7-0 over the LaVille Lancers with 6.50 to go in the second quarter. So the Redskins Skins are leading right now. Yeah, seven to nothing in the second quarter. Yeah, I figured uh, Laville's got a stout defense, so I was wondering how that was going to go. Here's a handoff to Jack Rogers up the left side. He's breaking a tackle, crosses the 40, now to the 35 to the 30, still on his feet, and he's going to be finally brought down around the 15, 16 yard line. That's another huge run for Jack Rogers and the Culver Cavaliers, Chris. Yeah, they that was the. The play that they popped for uh, 68 yards in their first score. Uh, they come back to it there. They like uh, seeing something oh, on the uh, defensive on the right carry. side there that they like offensively and allowing Rodgers now. He made Put a couple guys uh, pay for it right there. He Addison broke a couple Allen. tackles there to, to break that long run. But, again, Culver finding something that they like first on the left side of the offense, right the side Cavaliers. of the defense with that sweep. Well, and this just puts them in great position. That only took 11 seconds off the clock. We're at exactly one minute to go here in the first half, and the Cavs are knocking on the door again. First and 10, ball on the Warriors, 22. Fumble on the play. The Cavs pounce on it, though, and save the day. This will push them back about ooh, maybe 10 yards, you think, Chris? 
Yeah, the Ethan Binion again able timeout to pounce on that. So, uh, That's their final timeout of the half. Yeah, going to be second here in about 20, and Culver takes their final timeout. Yeah, that stops the clock at 53 and a half seconds, 32 to 14. If the Cavs are able to put points on the board, that would get them closer, and then they start with the ball the second half. So, really, if you're the Culver Cavs this close to scoring, you want to punch this in here. This is an opportunity. Now, if you're the Winnemac Warriors, on the other hand, you want to stop this. You do not want to allow them to get in the end zone here. You want to make sure that they have to go to the halftime break. Only scoring two touchdowns. They do not want to allow a third here. Please make your way down to the north end on the track. Thank you. Yeah, again, just uh, it's going to be an exciting 53 and a half seconds, that's for sure, because like I said, uh, it's a whole new ball game. Culver punches this in with them getting the ball to start the second half. When you think about that Jack Rogers run, it was what around the 40-yard line on, on their side of the field, and he takes it all the way down to about the the 20, the 23-yard the line. I mean, what a run by Jack Rogers. That's a couple of plays tonight that he has provided for his Cavs. As here's from Shotgun, second and 15. McEwen rolls out to his left, fires. Intended targets Ryan Beam, and he goes out of bounds immediately. Pass complete to number one, Ryan May have got Beam, six goes on out of the bounds. pass completion. After about a three-yard gain. Oh, just a three-yard You three kind of like to see Ryan Beam three, have a feel three. for what's going on around him. I mean, he stepped out of bounds, and he yeah. probably could have picked up five or six five yards or six and more. stepped out of bounds. Yeah, he was worried. Having, a, having an understanding... Yeah. I like the fact that he got out of bounds to stop the clock because you're out of timeouts, but you also got to understand that, hey, there's there's no pressure there. You got to feel that yep. uh, behind you and be able to pick up five or six more yards, then step out of bounds. That makes it third and 13 for the Cavs. They need to make a play here. Ball on the Warriors' 25-yard line. From shotgun, McEwen takes the snap, looks to throw, fires immediately, and it's overthrown. His intended target falls incomplete. was Caleb McEwen, number 80. As that brings up fourth down, and you assume they go for it here. Oh, yeah, definitely going to go for it here. So fourth and 13. Uh, let's see what uh, Culver has in the, in the bag of tricks here. See if Winnemac decides to uh, to drop seven or eight or, or actually uh, blitz those inside linebackers, how much pressure they put on the quarterback here on fourth down. So the Cavs going for it. Fourth and 13, ball on the Warriors, 26. McEwen from shotgun, takes the snap, come looking blitz. to throw. Here come, the Cavs, here come the Warriors, deep throw, and it was almost intercepted. By Jay Jones, pass, number, 24, number 24, and that's a Jay turnover Jones. on downs with 39 seconds to go. The Warriors take the over in their own territory. Ball on the 26, that keeps the score 32-14. to 14. And if you're the Winnemac Warriors, Chris, that's exactly what you wanted. Exactly, and, you know, Winnemac's got two timeouts, 39 seconds here. I, you know, I don't know how aggressive you be. Uh, if you're Josh Burgess, maybe take a knee because Culver cannot stop the ball the or stop the clock. So, again, I think uh, maybe you, you, you call a run play here, see what you get, and uh, see if it determines how aggressive you are here right before halftime. First and 10 for the Warriors. The final moments of this first half, 32-14. to 14, They lead the Culver Cavaliers as Cash Roth's going to take this under center. First and 10. Hands off up the middle. This is Talon Garner fighting his way forward and maybe an 11 yard run. He's going to move the chains, getting the first down. 54, Braden Mulbash on the stop. And now. Winnemac called the timeout. Yeah. So Winnemac uses another one of their timeouts. The Cavs used all three this half. So far, the Warriors have used two of their three. They have one left now. I mean, they might try to make something happen here, Chris, maybe. Yeah, with Cash Roth there in the backfield. Uh, maybe get something going here in the passing game. I know Culver, you know, Culver defensively have ha has had trouble covering the pass this year. They've got a lot of, a lot of deep balls thrown over their heads. So uh, maybe look for uh, Winnemac here, come out, run four verticals, see what they can get. 
or maybe go back to the Wayback Machine and run the old post corner that they used to run back when I played. Coach Ross just looks at me and smiles and laughs. laughs. Still gives you nightmares, huh? Oh, I, oh no, I give him nightmares because he still remembers me off right at the 36-yard line. And I look at him, he's, he's starting to yell at me. I better be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> First and ten for the Warriors. Cash Roth under center takes a snap, steps back looking to throw. He is going to chuck it deep. Intended target, Jaden Jones, and oh, it is incomplete. He tried to keep both feet in. It looked like, looked like an NFL player out there trying to keep both feet in, stretching for the catch, but no. As Actually the, had it till he hit the ground, right. but... Uh, Again, in high school football, all you need is one. one. You don't need to have both feet inbounds. But, again, uh, doing a good job there of actually brought the ball in. But when he hit the ground, the ground caused it to pop out. So, wasn't able to complete the catch. Second and 10, 24.4 seconds to go. The Warriors aren't kneeling. They want to make something happen before this half. Roth sets his man in motion, takes the snap under center, steps back, fires deep left side. It's Jace Benall, and it's broken up by number well, seven, Hayden Parker, seven, the Jace senior. Broken up on the play by Good seven, coverage Hayden there Parker the by Cavaliers. Parker for the Cavs. Third down that was a home Warriors. run ball there, Chris. Again, so third and ten here with 18 seconds to go. And look for Winnemac maybe. Um, again, you got one timeout. Maybe continue to take a shot. Why not? Yeah, he stops the clock at 18 seconds. The Cavs of course, get that's the... easy for me to say. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> the Cavs get the ball to start the second half. The Warriors do not want to let their foot off the gas here. Roth under center, takes the snap, hands off. This is Addison Allen breaking away to the left side, crosses the 50, and he's tackled at about the 42-yard line. The clock continues to roll. Now it stops so that they can move the chains. The Warriors are trying to do a little hurry-up offense here. You see Max Gearhart getting the line in, in, in motion here, trying to get set up. Yeah, going to try to clock it here. So the clock starts, they need to snap it. Roth takes the snap, and he does spike the ball. So that stops the clock at 7.1 seconds. They're trying to score here, Chris. Yeah, they are. Uh, So they still have one timeout with seven seconds to go. So, Well, and I think it just goes. With having that one timeout still opens up the entire field. Yeah. Well, and I think it just goes to show you you're at home. It is homecoming. You haven't been able to get a win yet this season. This is how important this game is for Winnemac right now, and I think they're proving it on this drive. 32-14, to 14, the Winnemac Warriors lead. 7.1 seconds to go here in the first half. Roth takes the snap under center. This is going to be the last play potentially of the half. He's holding on to it. Now he rolls out to his right. He fires, and it is caught immediately. That is Jaden Jones. Now he's trying to... Oh, my goodness, he's going to be brought down and tackled at about the 18-yard line. He tried to make a maneuver that didn't quite work, but they get all the way up to about the 13-yard line, and that's where the Cavs bring them down, and that is the end of the first half. 32-14, the Winnemac Warriors against the Culver Cavaliers. We are going to take a break and come back. For sports analyst Chris McGowan, I'm Mitch Columbia. You're listening to Kankakee Valley Broadcasting. WKVI. Uh, 13 to 6 at halftime, and it will be LaVille uh, to have the ball to start the second half. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Todd and Josh Lawrence of Lawrence Farms. We thank Todd and Josh Lawrence for supporting local high school sports as we are set for second half action from Routabush Field in Winnemac, Indiana. Mitch Columbia along with sports analyst Chris McGowan. We also have Justin Ruff up here in the booth with me for the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, let's Appreciate him being here. Getting a glimpse of how we run things. We're hoping we get to hear him in the uh, fall or winter, I should say, for the basketball season. Very excited for that. As here is the kick. Squib up the middle. And pouncing on it is a Cavalier at about the 27-yard line. That's number 42, Ethan Binion. So that's where the game is. Did a good job of fielding that squib kick there, but uh, just lost his footing and knee hit the ground there. So Colbert will get the ball start uh, on their own 26-yard line. That's where the Cavaliers will have it first and 10. 
So the Cavs hoping to turn things around here. They don't really want to let the Warriors score any points right now. They want to try to catch back up down 32-14. to 14. This is an opportunity for them to make their mark here in the third. This is going to be Jonas McEwen from shotgun, and I believe that's Jack Rogers to his right. Takes the snap, hands off the Rogers up the left side, cuts back up the middle. Now he's still on his feet before he's brought down. It took two, maybe three Warriors before he's tackled at the 26, 27 yard line. Maybe a yard, maybe two, if that. Yeah, Culver come out and going back Several to that sweep that side. they had so much success with in the second quarter there, but uh, Winnemac making the adjustments they needed to make. Uh, only giving up one yard there on first down. So back to the drawing board. Jonas McEwen gets the call from the sideline. Trots out to the huddle. They break, and now they trot up to the line. McEwen, who normally takes it from shotgun, is going to do the same again. Takes the snap. Hands off the Rodgers, up the middle, breaks the tackle, and wow, what a run by Jack Rodgers. Maybe eight on the carry, and that's just the type of running he can provide. He's listed as a wide receiver, Chris, but the more and more we see him, he's more of a running back, half back option. Yeah, again, uh, nice run there on second down. Uh, manageable third and two here for the Cavaliers. Two yards to go for the Cavs as they're going to try to move the chains. The clock continues to run. 10.35 to go here in the third quarter. 32-14, to 14, the Winnemac Warriors lead. McEwen takes the snap. Hands off up the middle, and he's met by a Warrior immediately. Nothing gained there as the Warriors plugged the hole. And that's the kind of defense the Warriors showed us last week in North Judson. Yeah, again, uh, getting off the bottom of the pile there, uh, 72, Lucas down, Perez, the freshman, the and number 70, Wyatt Wheeler, the senior. So fourth and four, the Warriors are going to pump this one away. Deep to return is number 15 of the Winnemac Warriors, Addison Allen. Addison Allen, deep to receive the punt for the Warriors. And I believe that's Ethan Binion punting away. It is. Punt is clean away. It bounces and around the Warrior 41-yard line, and that's where number 24, the Culver Cavaliers, Brady, Brady Kinderney touches it, and that's Down exactly the where the Winnemac Warriors the will take over. That's where the Warriors As will we've take over seen the, the junior, Cash Roth, have a really good night in his first night back as the starting quarterback. He went all season last year as the sophomore. This year they went with Max Gearhart. Of course, we know Max Gearhart from the spring. He's one of the fantastic pick pitchers on this Winnemac Warrior team. But like head coach Josh Burgess said, they wanted to go with a new look tonight, and so far that look is looking good. Under centers, Cash Roth takes the snap, toss out. This is Jaden Jones fighting his way forward. No, that's Maddox Buzinski. And a ball comes loose, but I think he was down before it came loose. The Cavs aren't wanting to get, get rid of it, though. They want to fight for it as that was number 54 on the play. Brayden Molbash, the junior for the Cavs, makes it second and five for the Warriors. Second down. Yeah, good start there for Winnemac. Uh, just a nice toss sweep to the left there, and, and uh, Max Brzezinski picking up five yards, so staying ahead of the chains here early. Second and five. Ball on their own 46-yard line. Cash Roth to take this under center. He does. Hands off. Jaden Jones wrapped up immediately by a cab and brought down. On the carry. I get Jaden Jones and Maddox Buzinski mixed up a lot. They're very similar athletes. The yeah, very similar in size and height and weight. So, uh, yeah, pretty hard there. And like you said, very similar in their running styles as well. Yes. So here's a third and four for the Warriors. Trying to get the first down and move the chains. It's Cash Roth under center. Talon Garner in the backfield all alone. Takes the snap. 
Rolls out to his left. He's looking to throw. He's still on his feet. Now he's going to tuck and run, and he's knocked out of bounds immediately by Jack Rogers. A big-time hit. And Jack just gives a look over to the Winnemac Warriors sideline like, I'm here, boys, and I'm going to be here all night long, baby. Fourth down, five yards to go. So good stop there by Culver defensively. Uh, Winnemac going to line up to punt here for the first time. Now, remember, Cash Roth is the punter for the Warriors, so uh, you got to be leery of yeah. any any fake. Yep. Roth in punt yep. formation for the Warriors. So Cash Roth set to punt this one away. A good defensive job by the Culver Cavaliers as both teams' defenses get a stop to start the second half. The snap, the hold, the punt is up away clean. A nice punt. It bounces around the 30-yard line in Culver Cavalier territory, and it comes to a complete stop at about the 24-25-yard line. That's Warriors where the Cavs the take the over. 24-yard line, that's where the Cavaliers will take it first. Yeah, again, uh, Culver doing a good job there defensively, uh, forcing the uh, punt for Winnemac, the first punt of the night. Nice punt as well. Cash Roth's got a leg. Well-placed punt too, Chris. I can only assume he, he must be related to Tim Roth, right? <laughs> I don't know. Coach Roth isn't here to ask. But with 8.49 in the second quarter over at Liberty Field, North Judson now is up 21-12. That's how fast things can change. I have a score update from West Central. We'll tell you after the play. It's a throw by Jonas McEwen out to the right side. A nice nine-yard gain. Number 24, Brady Kinderney. And he gets nine. Oh, it's going to be a first down. The chain gang's moving the chains. And it's a nice pass play from Jonas McEwen to Brady Kinderney for the first down. The Cavs start this drive off strong. My score update from Athletic Director Jeff Messer says West Central is up at halftime 48-6 to right now. Appreciate that, Jeff, as the West Central Trojans are rolling along. We remind you next week, the Winnemac Warriors and the West Central Trojans will renew the rivalry, the battle for Pulaski County. The Tomahawk Trophy's on the line again as here's Jonas McEwen. Throws out to his left side, intended target was number seven, Hayden Parker, the senior. And it's Broke incomplete. Line, he had to get rid of it fast. The Warriors were coming after him. Yeah, Winnemac again continuing to bring a lot of pressure here out of this 3-4 defense. Bring second and 10. Ball on their own 35-yard line. 36. 35 and a half. It's close enough. 6.30 to go here in the third quarter. 32 to 14. The Winnemac Warriors lead. The Cavs need something to happen here. From shotgun, it's Jonas McEwen taking his time. Use the hard count. It didn't work this time. Now he's going to take it. Un and he does. From shotgun, looks to throw. Here come the Cavs. And it's going to be a big time sack by number 85 of the Winnemac Warriors. Tucker Fox, the senior, read that well. And he got Jonas McEwen in the backfield. Yeah, got away with the face mask there, too. But, uh, again, great play there by Fox. Third and long yeah, it was for the Cavaliers. Game. Yeah, from up here, we wouldn't have been able to tell. You really get a very good vantage point down there on the field, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I love being able to run the sidelines, being able to walk up and down the entire length of the field. It's great. <laughs> So this is third and 19 for the Cavs. Trips to the right, takes the snap, hands off up the middle, and he doesn't get much. I believe that was Binion on the handoff, as that's going to bring fourth down here, Chris, to the Cavs punt. And there's a Cav down on the field, a little hobbled on the play. This is the third injury timeout of this game. As here in week six, you can only imagine the bodies are starting to feel it, Chris. The wear and tear is adding up. Yeah, it's number 70 for the Cavaliers. Shane check Martin, the, the freshman. Yeah, check, check the program here, Shane Martin, yeah. It's cooled off a little bit. Uh, 
com the sun has completely gone down. We are definitely underneath the Friday night lights. It's 70 degrees and clear here in Winnemac as they are going to help Shane Martin of the Culver Cavaliers off the field, the freshman. And, you know, that's not the first freshman we've named on this Culver Cavalier team, Chris. That's how young this Cavs team is. Yeah, they start a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores up front. Uh, just, uh, like I said, a very young group that uh, baptism by fire uh, this season. Another score update from Liberty Field. North Judson's now up 28-12. to 12. Cole Wilcox has scored his third touchdown of the game with a pick six. Cole Wilcox, well, that's a name we know well. Big-time player for the Blue Jays. He can pop off at any moment as well. Cavs set to punt away. Oh, nice it's clean punt. away, wow. and it is a booming punt back to about the 27-yard line in Winnemac territory. That's the kind of punt you want. And now there's a little extracurricular activity on the field. The flag flies. Number 12 of the Winnemac Warriors was involved, Tierson Wolford. And I didn't see the other number for the Cavs. Number 24. Number 24. Brady Kendernay, both of them going at it a little bit. That's how chippy this game is. You know, both teams, they want to win. They just want to get a win in the win call, and that's what this is about. Yeah, that was a heck of a punt by uh, Ethan. Binion. Ethan Binion. Just, uh, just a nice spiral there. and Looked like hey, a throw. Well, it looked like a pass. <laughs> yeah, it did. So, Beautiful. Yeah, it was. So this starts the Winnemac drive at their own 29-yard line. First and 10. We're under five minutes to go here in the third. This quarter's kind of gone a little quicker than the first two. Or maybe it just feels that way. Under center is Cash Roth. He's going to take the snap. Steps back looking to throw. Fires deep down the right sideline. He's wide open. And Jay Spindle. And he comes up with the catch. Out of bounds. And it's incomplete. It sailed out of bounds too far, but what a play. And Cash Roth has got the arm. Another Cav is on the field. It looks like it may be a cramp situation. They're stretching him out. As I said, it's cooled down to about 69 degrees. And these are where those kind of moments happen. You've got to get the water in. You've got to have that water in you. These cramps will pop up. There's head coach Faust out there stretching. He's stretching the Cav himself. We can't yeah, but the, the problem is, though, drinking water now, yeah, it's, it's going to help a little bit, but you got to hydrate before the game. Yeah. Uh, you, this, this is something that you do throughout the week. Right. Um, that's how you prevent the cramps. Um, you know, drinking the water in that now, it's not going to affect you until tomorrow. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the one thing I have come to, to realize, you know, the, the, a trick is mustard packets. Mustard packets? Yeah, mustard does help uh, with the cramp. <laughs> we don't have a mustard sponsor, Chris. We can't be shouting that out. Well, anybody wants to be our mustard sponsor? The Frenchies. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Maybe we'll call Hines. We'll call Hines. Yeah. French has turned us down. <laughs> oh, man. They're still stretching him out. As they're taking their time. Man, you know, these are the types of cramps. You just, it just seemed probably like it won't go away. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you've never experienced one, which you said you have, you've never experienced yeah. one, consider yourself lucky. I, I really have. Well, I never played football. Never played football. Really, after doing as many football games as I have, Chris, I can be honest with you, I'm really mad at myself I didn't. Really am. It's a lot of fun to watch. 
Well, they're still stretching him out. We might as well have a chance to talk with uh, Justin Ruff here. Justin, uh, what do you think so far, man? Oh, thanks. Thanks, Mitch. This is, this is fun. You know, I mean, when we were down there, me and uh, me and Chris, we were down there under the lights Friday, you know. Yeah. You know, high school football, you know, just being down there and being up here with you. Yeah. Um, it's, definitely, it's definitely a fun time, that's for sure. Well, we're excited to hopefully have you on the sidelines for some basketball games. Uh, I understand you. you used to coach here at Winnemac, or you still do? I do. I do not. I got a new job, so now I'm, I'm, I'm joining you on the, on the <laughs> sidelines and, and talking about some basketball with my mouth. You know, that's fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. We're back in action. Second and 10 for the Winnemac Warriors. Ball on their own 29, 20, 29 yard line, 28, and then flags fly false here. Start call against the Warriors. Go back to the 24, 23 off. yard line now. Yeah. Yeah. Ball start by down. Winnemac. Well, we appreciate you being here tonight, Justin, just uh, getting a glimpse of what Chris does down there on the sideline. He's very involved down there, as you He's can having tell. fun down he there. He is having yeah, fun, he, very he, involved. He is having fun. <laughs> I told you, yeah. he's like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. Yeah, I had to uh, I had to really, you know, stay with him because he was, he was going, you know, up and down. And I had to tell him to slow down one time. Second and 15, they take the snap, they toss out, big time hit by a Cavalier as Maddox Buzinski tried to make some space. Huge tackle, didn't get the number, but a Cav was in there and he made it happen. That was Ethan Binion. Yeah, which brings up third and 15, the Warriors get nothing. This is two drives in a row, the Cavs defense is really being staunch. Not allowing anything. Amazing how many how many points were scored in the first half, and then we come out here in the second half yeah. and it's a defensive battle. The kind of game that you prefer, I guess, right, Chris? <laughs> oh, yeah. I love a knockdown drag out. Third and 15, Cash Roth under center, sets his man in motion, takes the snap, hands off. This mm. is Maddox Buzinski around the left side. He gets around the corner. He's going to get the first down and more before he's finally brought out of bounds by number seven, Hayden Parker, the senior, but a big-time first down run. That moves the chains for the Winnemac Warriors. There's another one down, Mitch. Another cramping situation. 24. Yeah. That's, uh, I believe, Brady Kinderney. Yeah, Brady Kinderney, mm. he's hobbled on the play, and he gets yeah. to the sideline and falls to the field immediately. That's another cramp issue. And like Chris has said before, it's contagious. Once one happens, another one happens quick. So now back in action, first and 10, ball on their own 43. Roth sets his man in motion, takes the snap, steps back, looks to throw wide open. It's Maddox Musinski, caught at the 45, tackled at the 42, and brought down by Hayden Parker again before he's brought out of bounds. Oh, they are not saying he was out of bounds. He was down on the field. The clock continues to roll, 338 to go here in the third, 32 to 14. If you're just joining us, the Winnemac Warriors lead the Culver Cavaliers. Mitch Columbia along with sports analyst Chris McGowan and Justin Ruff. We're so glad you've joined us here from Winnemac, Indiana at Rattabush Field. First and 10, Cash Roth under center. Sets his man in motion, takes the snap, fumbles the snap, but picks it up. Now he hands off to mm. Jaden Jones, who cuts his way forward. A no, nice eight-yard gain by Jaden Jones. You know, they go back and forth there, Chris, between Jaden Jones and Maddox Musinski. Those are their two playmakers they like to use. Yeah, they do a very good job. Very patient uh, running there by Jaden Jones. Picked up seven yards. I tell you what, uh, you know, on the last couple pass plays, I've noticed – you know, Max Gearhart at tight end running mm -hmm. down the seam in the middle of the field has been wide open. Mm -hmm. So it be interesting to see whether or not the Winnemac spotters have picked that up. Under center, Cash Roth, second and third, second and three, takes the snap, fakes the toss, hands off to Willis Dennis up the middle. He's going to Six, maybe get the close to the, the first down. We'll see what they Brought call. Close to the line the game. Nope, it's going to be third and short. Ball spotted right at the 35, so it's third down short for the Warriors. Third and short, probably a similar play up the gut, you assume, Chris? I would think so here. Uh, maybe a little quarterback sneak or just a power play here. Cash Roth under center. 
hand off the towel and Garner here, maybe yeah. to the right side. Garner in the backfield. He sets his man in motion. That's Addison Allen. No, he's going to throw to Allison Allen in the flat to the 30. Now he gets to the 25 before he's sandwiched by two Cavaliers, 54 and 42. Braden Molbash and Ethan Binion both on the play, but that's enough for a Winnemac Warrior burst down and they move the chains, Justin. Yeah, you know what? I was thinking, I really think that, especially when Maddox and Jaden Jones, they get the ball, I really think those two guys took the offense lineman out for breakfast this morning because they're <laughs> – they're just blocking. Yeah. The holes are just huge for them, especially for Jaden Jones. In the first half, he was slicing and dicing through huge holes, yeah. and he was reading them perfectly. And I really do. I think they took him out for, for <laughs> breakfast. I'm like, hey, big boys, block for me. I need some, I need some yards and touchdowns because they're doing a good job that offensive line. Did you ever take your O-line out for breakfast, Chris? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't afford to feed those guys. <laughs> I took in basketball when I play. I took my point guard to some breakfast and dinners. But hey, pass me the ball. Pass me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I should have done that more often. <laughs> <laughs> As it looks like Ethan Binion was on the field, but he's he's up now. He might have got a little hobbled on that play. That we have a timeout from the Culver Cavaliers. Their first of three here in the second half. Probably just wanting to talk some things over here, huh, Chris? Yeah, just kind of with all the cramps happening, making sure everybody's in the proper spot and they got the right personnel in the game. Um, another score update, I tell you what, it's turned into a pinball game over at North Judson. Uh, North Judson has put another touchdown on the board, so with 6.22 in the second quarter, it's now 35-12 to 12 North Judson. Mm. We'll be keeping an eye on that game as both of those teams are our area schools. As back in our game, it's first and ten. Ball on the 25 in Cavalier territory. It's a handoff. Now, Jaden Jones up the right side. He's got enough room. Gets to the ten, the five, and he's knocked out of bounds. Maybe around the six right in front of you, Chris. Yeah, knocked out about the four-yard line there. Ryan B coming up and making a play. But the excellent run there by Jaden Jones. A good stiff arm to get himself uh, free there into the open. So so first and goal from the four. He has some speed. Oh, Jayden man. Jaden Jones. Holy Jayden cow. Jones has speed. And, you know, when we heard in week Ball one just he had to go through line. concussion first protocol, uh, you know, we were really worried about him. I think he was out for, I want to say, maybe one to two weeks. And that's a big-time piece for the Winnemac Warriors. It's good to see him back on the field as here is first and goal. Roth under center, up the middle, it's Addison Allen for a win, a Mac Warrior touchdown just that fast. And the Warriors put six more on the board. It's 38 to 14 with a minute 20 to go here in the third. And we'll see if the, the Warriors go for two here or not. This is probably the first taste of success for the Winnemac Warriors all year you got to be loving it, and you better believe they they love it. And Winnemac uh, going to attempt the PAT here, going to kick. Yeah, and it looks like number 21, Ethan Burgess, to do the kicking duties, and Max Gearhart to hold the snap. The snap, the mm, hold, and him. flags fly. We'll see what they call. Penalty flags on the play. The one thing I, the one thing I would tell Ethan Burgess right there is, hey, yeah, granted, the whistle blew, but the ball is snapped. Go ahead and go through your routine. Yeah, go, go ahead, ahead and do kick it. the ball through the uprights. Get that extra practice kick in. So it was a penalty on both teams. They offset, so it'll stay right where it's at. He will kick from the ten yard line. Burgess set to go. Max Gearhart. The snap. The hold. The kick. And it's low. He That's almost got blocked. He may have been worried about it as it's no good. That keeps the score 38-14. to 14. The Winnemac Warriors lead the Culver Cavaliers.
We remind you tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Nepco Crane and Equipment Services, specializing in mobile crane service. Call Joe Snep at 1 800 590 2272 for all your residential, commercial, and agricultural crane needs. Hey, stop by Papa Farm Pizza after the game for fresh ingredients that separates their pizza from any others. That's Papa Farm Pizza. Downtown Ladies and Knox. Let me remind you for up-to-date information, scores, highlights, photos, and featured stories. We ask that you please visit the Winnemac Athletics website. Hey, so tomorrow morning again. I wish I could listen. You know, Al Breifogel is going to step in for me tomorrow morning and uh, take my take my seat uh, in the coach's corner. Uh, you got to make sure you tell him that he has to be witty and he has to come up with some good one-liners. I don't think I'll have to tell him that at all, Chris. He'll bring he'll bring the whole package himself. I texted him. I said, hey, Chris can't make it this weekend. Are you in? Or can you be our guest the whole show? And he texts back within two minutes. No problem. I'll be there. Sounds about right. That sounds like yeah. Al Breifogel, doesn't it? <laughs> We're excited to have him on in the morning. He'll have a chance to ask some questions. I'm interested to hear the, the type of questions he'll ask, Chris. Garner set to kick for the Warriors. Well, yeah, you know, he's he's part of that uh, that book that gets put out, that Gridiron Digest book every yeah. year. So uh, very knowledgeable about all the teams in the area, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, so Chris won't make it tomorrow. He is uh, has prior engagements, so in his place we'll have Al Breifogel in the morning as a guest. The whole entire show, we're very excited. Hope you join us at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central, right here on 99.3 FM and online at WKVI.com. You can listen to us on your phone wherever you are in the entire world. Go to one of our social media sites, tap the link on our page. There is no excuse. You have WKVI in the palm of your hand. As here's the kick to the Cavs, it's high, and it bounces out around the 28-yard line. Then a flag flies. Yeah, illegal procedure there, kicking the ball out of bounds. So Culver get the ball on the 35-yard line. Not a bad place to start for the Cavs. We've seen big-time runs from Jack Rogers, a couple good pass plays from Jonas McEwen. The Cavs are just looking for that one play to make something happen. There's plenty of time left. Minute 20 to go in the third. They have two of their three timeouts left. Winnemac has all three. It's first and 10. Ball on their own 35-yard line, and Jonas McEwen gets the call from the sideline as he trots out to relay the play to the huddle. McEwen from shotgun. I believe that's Ethan Binion to his left. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Here come the Warriors. Blitz is on, and it was an intended target. He got rid of it in just in time to Hayden Parker. But it's incomplete, and that'll bring up second down. Full-on blitz from the Warriors there, Chris. Yeah, again, uh, just uh, great pressure there from the defensive end position. Uh, not giving McEwen very much time to set up and throw. Uh, basically got rid of that just to, to save himself. So McEwen breaks the huddle as it's second and 10. He's going to take it from shotgun. Takes the snap, hands off to Ethan Binion up the middle, and he's wrapped up immediately by a Winnemac Warrior. He didn't get much, maybe a yard if that. One of the Warriors I saw on the play was number 70, Wyatt Wheeler, a name we know from the baseball team this past spring. Wyatt, Wyatt Wheeler, Wheeler a big kid, big, guy. big young man, I should yeah. say. Senior, 6'4", 250 pounds. You can't get by that guy. I walked, When I was out there on the field, he almost stepped on me. Just a big <laughs> just a big body, big guy. Well, I'm not a big, you know, I'm not a tall individual, but, I mean, he is pretty tall. And he's big, too. Good for him. We're working on his body, getting stronger. Third and nine, McEwen tosses out. Ooh. This is Ethan Binion. Two, three, Third, fourth, Winnemac bringing him down. Talon Garner was the one that finally helped get him to the ground. As the clock continues to roll, that brings up fourth down. We're under 15 seconds to go here in the third quarter as they might let this one tick out here. Yeah, going to let this run out and uh, go to the fourth quarter. So at the end of the three, at the end of three quarters here, Winnemac 38, Culver 14. 15 yards to go. So it'll be fourth and 15 for uh, Culver as we start the fourth quarter. 
And we're going to take a break with them. I'm Mitch Columbia along with sports analyst Chris McGowan. We also have Justin Ruff shadowing. You're listening to Kankakee Valley Broadcasting's WKVI. Back at Roundabush Field. Mitch Columbia along with sports analyst Chris McGowan. We go to the fourth quarter, 38-14. to The Warriors hoping to get their first win of the 2023 campaign. We're so glad you've joined us here on Kankakee Valley Broadcasting's WKVI. The tradition continues. Fourth and 15 is where the Cavs will have a chance to, they're either going to punt here or they're going to try something special. We'll see what they do. It'll be interesting. I would assume they punt here. Is this Ethan Binion? To start the fourth quarter. Mm. Takes the snap. Pinion. He is going to punt and get it away cleanly. It's going to go into Cavalier territory and bounce around the 42-yard line. And that's where Caleb McEwen touches it. And that's where the Winnemac Warriors will start their possession here in the fourth quarter. Now, if you're the Winnemac Warriors, I can only assume, Justin, your foot's to the floor. You want to score here. This is a chance to win at homecoming. This is a chance to get your first win of the season. You don't want to take this easy. You want to put your foot to the floor is what I assume is a Winnemac Warrior. Absolutely. And they kind of showed that before halftime, them really looking to push the ball and score before the zeros yeah. in, the, in the halftime. So I guarantee they're really aggressive here and look to get another one. First and 10, ball on their own 41-yard line. Cash Roth has been the starting quarterback this entire game. We haven't seen him all season, and so far it's working. He takes the snap. He hands off. This is breaking a tackle. Jaden Jones around the right side. Finally pushed out of bounds by Ethan Binion at the 47. Jones and that's what you were talking about. You and Chris were talking about a little bit earlier. Jaden Jones has got the wheels, Chris. Yeah, and Ethan Binion showing his speed there, too, catching him and knocking him out of bounds, but uh, not before he Second picks up about, uh, about six yards or five yards on that play. Yeah, definitely right at four or five yards. Yeah, they're giving him five, so it's second and five. Ball on the 46. Under center, Cash Roth. Talon Garner and Maddox Buzinski in the backfield. Takes the snap, hands off to Maddox up mm -hmm. the left side, and he's got room before he's finally Maddox brought Buzinski down. On the carry. One of the Cavs on the play, number 54, Braden Molbash, the junior. Braden Molbash led the charge for the Cavaliers that on brings defense. up third and two here. Third down, two yards. The Cavs D has been very good so far this half. They've only given up one touchdown compared to the first half. Much better. So this brings up third and two. The Warriors hope to get this first down to move the chains to keep this drive alive. Roth under center. Sets his man in motion. Takes the snap, hands off the Talon Garner up the middle, and he's going to get the first down and maybe a few more before he's brought down on the Cavs' 46-yard line. That's enough for a Winnemac Warrior first down, and they move the chains, Chris. Yeah, just a base dive play there by the – or what uh, Winnemac may call the wedge, uh, just uh, straightforward, just uh, everybody base block straight ahead, and, uh, pick up the first down. First and ten for the Warriors. You know, if you're Cash Roth, you are very excited at the way things have been going right now. You, you, you weren't able to be the quarterback for the first five weeks. Now here's your chance to get us the first, to get them the first win of the year. As he takes the snap and hands off to Maddox Buzinski up the left side, still on his feet, breaks two, three tackles before he's finally brought down. That might be, and it is, a first down run for Maddox Buzinski. He lowered his head and he charged forward. The running game. Good, strong, powerful run there by Maddox Buzinski. Uh, he was actually named homecoming king at halftime. I did not hear that. We were talking with Brian Leverins. I'm glad you caught that information. So the homecoming king gets the big time first down. 
And that moves the chains for the Warriors. It's here. It's first and 10. Ball on the Cavs, 35-yard line, 38-14, to 9.20 to go in the game. Roth sets his man in motion, takes the snap under center, hands off. This is Jaden Jones working around. Now he's dancing around, makes a nice play, gets around the quarter to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, and he's finally brought out of bounds by a Cavalier. That was number – can't quite see the number for the Cavs. I think that's number one, Ryan Beam. Yeah, Ryan Beam on the tackle big time. Saving, touchdown, saving tackle as the Warriors are knocking on the door. Jane Jones, he's got to be a good dancer. Yeah. I mean, he's just shuffling <laughs> his feet around the big boys, trying to play pick a boo where he needs to go, yeah. where the defender play is. Play hide and seek Absolutely. there around number 70. <laughs> yeah. That was, some, that was some good run it. Well, they go back and forth between him and Jaden Jones and Maddox Buzinski. Those two are something special. Mm -hmm. As here's a running up the gut. Talon Garner, another four to five yards. Big time game. Those three guys right there, they're just running it out. I mean, heck, you know, trying to run the clock, but, you know, still try to be aggressive and get on the board. Down the two-yard line. So, second down. Sorry, Chris, go to, ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say to start the second half at LaVille, um, Knox intercepts LaVille on LaVille's opening possession of the second half, but then LaVille ends up turning Knox over on down. So LaVille has the ball now in the third quarter, less than nine minutes to go. Hmm. Takes the snap, hands off the Talon corner, up the middle. And they call it a touchdown. It's another Winamac Warrior touchdown, 44-14. This is the kind of game the Warriors have been waiting on all season, Chris. Yeah, and again, you heard Coach uh, Burgess at halftime talk about, you know, the switch at quarterback, thinking that they needed a spark. And I'll tell you what, Gearhart uh, stepping up and, and playing tight end. Look out. Winnemac uh, might be able to get on a little bit of a roll here to end the season. Set to kick the extra point. It's number 76. Charlie Dissinger, the sophomore. Max Gearhart takes the snap. The hold, the kick is up away. And it is good. And that juices the entire Winnemac Warrior Nation. They like that one. A high arcing extra point. And they get it to go, 45-14 to 14 with 8.02 to go here in the ball game. That's exciting. You know, heck, the, the whole team went nuts for one point. You know, that's... You know, with, with Charlie kicking that, you can tell that's that's team chemistry building for the Warriors. That's pretty pretty special. Hey, Chris, talking on what you were saying, uh, the Knox-LaVille game, Neil Minix just messaged me. It's 13-13, to 7.24 to go in the third. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Cody Allen for the LaVille Lancers with a one-yard touchdown run. And uh, Lucas Plummer uh, kicks the PAT to tie it up at 13-13. to so a heck of a ball game up in La Paz. Yeah, the Knox Redskins undefeated so far this season. Also undefeated are the West Central Trojans, and they are leading 54-6 to right now against South, the South Newton Rebels of Kentland, Indiana. 54-6. to Can anybody slow this West Central Trojan team down, Chris? I don't know, but I tell you what, uh, the way Winamax starting to play defensively, look out. That game might be a lot a lot closer than what people think. Well, yeah. and we were here for that one last year where we saw the West Central Trojans take the Tomahawk Trophy for the first time in, what, was it 12 years, I believe, last year. And uh, we found out last week on the Saturday Sports Line the Tomahawk Trophy isn't just a football traveling trophy. If the basketball team wins, it can go either way. So... It, Winnemac obviously won in the basketball game last year, so now the Tomahawk Trophy is back in Winnemac's possession. The Trojans are fighting to get that back next week. That is an interesting storyline. and uh, yeah, I don't agree with that. I, I think the either. Tomahawk needs to be. They need to come up with something else for basketball. <laughs> I agree. It, it is fun, though, as a, as, a, you know, as a kid and you're fighting for that Tomahawk. It's a it's big thing. And the kick return from the Cavs is snuffed out immediately quick around the 23-yard line, number 55 of the Winnipeg Warriors. Cody Wheeler, the freshman on the play. 55, Cody We've uh, actually called a lot of freshmen Warriors. out tonight Ball's on both sides, Chris, both the Cavs and the Winnipeg Warriors. I have a lot of freshmen out there providing excellent minutes. 
Yeah, again, uh, both, you know, the future looks bright for both these programs as long as the kids stick with it. That's, that's the main thing. Yeah. Here's the thing with Culver. I mean, heck, I know they're down, what, 31 points, if my math is correct. I'm no math. <laughs> Don't ask me. You know, yeah, I'm not a math guy, but, <laughs> you know, 31, you, you know, you got to just keep flowing your game, doing what coach wants you to do, but keep, you know, end, on this, end this game on a good note because next week is next week. McEwen from shotgun tosses out. This is Ryan Beam running around the right side. Breaks a tackle before he's finally brought down. Maybe a yard if that a flag flies late. And we'll see what they do. If this is on the Warriors, that'll push the Cavs forward. That was first down for them. A little extracurricular activity out uh, out on the perimeter, out, out of bounds. So I don't know who they're going to call that. They're going to call that on Winnemac or call that on call. Personal foul against the Cavaliers. Yeah, so personal foul on the Cavs. That's going to push them back, not move them forward. And they've had several penalties tonight like that, Chris, that just kind of hurt. Hmm. Beautiful, clear night here in Winnemac, Indiana. Got a final score for you, Mitch. We got the Triton Tro Trojans defeating the Pioneer Panthers 27 to 16. Wow. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a big win for Triton. Yeah. Yeah, game. another score update. Uh, Josiah Second McDaniel like with a 26 yard run for North penalty. Judson. PAT good. Uh, North Judson is now at 42 to 12. Pulling wow. away. And it is homecoming there in North Judson, San Pierre. You can almost bet Blue Jay Nation's going wild and back in our game, big time throw from Jonas McEwen. His intended target was number 24, Brady Kinderday up the right sideline. And it just was overthrown and the D was there. Jonas is showing he's got the arm talent, Chris. Yeah, again, just a... He's been a little little long on the deep ball tonight. He needs to put just a little bit more air underneath it and let his receivers be able to run under it. Seven twenty to go here in the ball game. Forty-five to fourteen. The Winnemac Warriors lead the Culver Cavaliers here in week six at Radabush Field. From shotgun, Jonas McEwen is going to be sacked in the backfield. Wow, what a play. Looks like that was number 85, Tucker Fox, the senior on the play. He read that well. That brings up fourth down long for the Cavaliers. He's done that a couple of times tonight, just getting a quick first step around the offensive line and just meeting the quarterback. He's He's got the speed tonight. Under seven minutes to go here in the ball game. The Cavs fourth in eternity. Just the five, about the six yard line. And they're going to have to pump fourth this down. one away as this will be great field position for the Warriors. Ooh, they Gosh. almost blocked it, but it gets away clean. It bounces at the 44, maybe to the 50, and rolls into Cavalier or Warrior territory and spotted at the 44-yard line. That's where Ryan Beam touches it, and that's where the Warriors take over. Nice, big, booming punt from their own end zone. There's a flag on the play, though, I see, on the south end zone. We'll see what they call. I think it was running into the kicker, so it's only a five-yard penalty. Well, he, he didn't have much space. It looked like the Warriors, they didn't even have anybody to return. They wanted to block that one there. They got pretty close, but it didn't really phase. No, <laughs> no, not he, at all. He still kicked it pretty good. Hey, Mitch, according to Max Preps, Rushville up 26-17 to 17 in the fourth quarter. Hey, I'll take it. I'll take it, Chris. I'll take it. I think my, my buddy Matt Ketchum is at the game tonight. I'll see if that is correct. <laughs> he was excited about the Knox Laville matchup tonight. Well, it's living up to its billing, that's yeah. for sure. 
as I just got a score update from uh, athletic director Neil Minix of the Knox Redskins. Jake Conroy score, scored from 33 yards out, and the two-point conversion was good to give Knox the lead 21-13. to The Knox Redskins lead LaVille, Chris. That one's a long way from being over. So, again, uh, dice answer there by the Redskins. And Conroy from, from 33 yards out. Warriors have it first First and 10. Ball on their own 39-yard line. Under center, Cash Roth. Takes the snap, hands off. That's Maddox Buzinski up the middle, fighting his way forward, breaks the tackle Max before he's finally brought down, maybe four on the carry. Nice little run there by Maddox Buzinski. Several Cavaliers in on the stop. So Second now it looks like they're going to have some substitutions. Cash Roth, a lot of the starters, Maddox Buzinski, Jaden Jones, Jace Bentle, Aiden Jimenez. They're all coming out, Chris. It looks like this is going to be some extra playing time for the young boys. That's good. That's good seeing them, you know, get some practice in there. Yeah. And this is a sophomore Parker Zider at the quarterback mm -hmm. position. And now the Cavs, I think, call a timeout. No, we're not call calling the timeout. I want to make sure that uh, with all these substitutions that they have everybody out there that they That's want to have out there and everybody's in the correct that. position. So it's just a timeout there just to make sure that they've got the right personnel on the field here for the final 541. That uses one of their three. So both teams have two timeouts left here with 5.40 to go in the ball game. It's 45-14 to 14 if you just joined us. The Winnemac Warriors lead the Culver Cavaliers. I'm Mitch Columbia along with sports analyst Chris McGowan. Also here this evening joining us as a guest is Justin Ruff. We hope we see him in the winter season for basketball down on the sidelines getting all the inside information. Another piece we can add to the puzzle. Of course, we didn't really have a sideline reporter last year. We had Chris uh, toward the latter portion of the boys basketball season once girls basketball came to a close. Of course, we all know Chris McGowan coaches for that wonderful girls basketball team of Tri-Township. The Lady Tigers look strong. I can only imagine playing for a Chris McGowan. As here's under center, Parker Zider fumbles the snap, but they pounce on it immediately. And that's the kind of plays that the these play little these young the Warriors are going to have to go through to kind of learn so when they get older, they are more prepared. Yeah, again, just uh, mishandled the snap there. Probably a little here. nerves, not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You just called me coach? Me coach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is good for Parker, though. Soft, Very good. Um, you know, this is this is good for him to see. Third and nine under center. Parker Zider's going to take the snap, sets his man in motion. He does, spins around, hands off. Ooh. He's met by a Cavalier. That's Ethan Binion. The handoff was... Oh, no, Parker. Number six. Number six, Hendo, Willis, number Dennis. six Willis Dennis. And he gets nowhere, so the Warriors are going to have to pump this one away. The clock continues down. to tick. Under five minutes to go. Fourth down, and, ten and yards to go. To return this one, it looks like that is number one, Ryan Beam. Looks like it. Yeah, it looks number like one, Ryan, Ryan Beam. Yeah, Ryan Beam back, back to receive the Cash kick Roth here, kick for Winnipeg. Again, there's no Cash red light for Culver. It's still, it's still green. You still need to finish this game strong and, and you know, f finish on a high note. Yeah, absolutely. And the ball bounces all the way down to the 20-yard line, and that's where the Cavs will take over. Line. One thing that stood out to me tonight, Chris, is ball positioning. They, the Warriors have been able to make sure the Cavs are deep in their own territory for the majority of this ball game. Every time that the Cavs have taken over, it's not at the 50-yard line. It's not in a good area. They're always deep in their own territory. I think the Warriors have done a good job of that tonight. Yeah, they've definitely won the battle of the field position, that's for sure. Uh, again, having a weapon like Cash Roth, I tell you what, though, Ethan, I've been really impressed with Ethan Binion and his punts tonight for Colt. Yeah. Ethan Binion, quite the leg. 
cash crop. Actually saw, actually saw Coach Kyle Evans, the boys' basketball coach at Culver, working with Ethan before the game out in the field. Here's Binion uh, breaking away. Yeah, here's Binion breaking away mm. up the right side, and he's going to find his way forward for a first down. I was a little worried we were going to miss a touchdown running tackle there, but or a touchdown running play there as uh, – you're right, though. Uh, Kyle Evans, the head basketball coach, the boys' program over there at Culver. Uh, when you go to Culver's football practice, Kyle is out there, and they're Ryan using, Parker you know, Kyle's Ryan's pretty athletic, Chris. There. I didn't know how athletic Kyle Evans was, but when I saw him practicing out there on the football field, he moves pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, he's still pretty young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First and ten for the Cavs after that big-time run by Ethan Binion, and here's Jonas McEwen from Shotgun. Sets his man in motion. Oh, Hands off, this is Ryan Beam up the left side. He's got the first down, close to it, as he's tripped up around the 48-yard line, and it is enough to move the chains for a Culver Cavalier first down. They are showing heart here late in the game, Chris. Yeah, they are. There's no there's no give up. Uh, you know, you're still fighting. And again, that, that shows great promise for the future that's for sure for the Cavaliers and I think next week oh, they're, they're traveling they're traveling to Caston so you know it's it's right it's something to to battle for as well they're going to call it second and short here so one yard is all they have to get to get the first down ball on their own 43 yard line the Cavs McEwen takes a snap it's a Shuffle pass forward to Ryan Beam, and he is going to get the first down this time. He's tackled at the 47, and he's still on the ground. We'll see if it's serious here. It is a cramp. It's like another cramp. Goodness. What about well, while we're while we're waiting here, uh, with 28 seconds to go in the first half, North Judson's put another touchdown on the board. A 32-yard pass to Noah Radke. So North Judson now leads 49-12. to 12. And the one thing that I want you to ask Coach Lambert tomorrow is the fact that uh, Connor Benson is 7-for-7 seven seven in extra point attempts. Now, I probably just jinxed him for the rest of the game. <laughs> just probably gave him the kiss of death. But uh, you got to ask about the being 7-for-7 seven seven in the first half. Yeah, you're doing something right if you're 7-for-7. Seven seven, right, Chris? is. Yeah, exactly. You're Especially, saying. you know, that Judson has has struggled uh, in the kicking game, um, and it, it might have cost him the game against Knox. To be quite honest, hmm. first and ten for the Cavs. Ball on their own forty-seven. McEwen takes the snap from shotgun. It's a shuffle pass forward to number ten Isaiah Gonzalez, working his way around the right side, crosses the fifty-yard line Isaiah before Gonzalez he's tackled at the forty-seven, forty-eight. Maybe a five-yard gain there, Chris. Yeah, again, uh, just uh, the forward pass there. Some nice way to get some easy it's pass like pass yards stop, uh, with that shovel Jason pass. Allen. Ball stopped at the 49-yard line. Second down and five for the Cavaliers. Second and five, ball on their own, or ball on the Warriors, 49. Takes the snap, handoff up Ooh. the middle. It's number seven. This is Hayden Parker getting the first down and more before he's Hayden tackled at the 33, 34 Chased yard line. That's a big time first down for the Culver Cavaliers. The 34 yard line. Yep, that's what you want. Positive yards, keep moving closer. And then you go at 130. Try to, we're trying to get it in if you're Culver. Yeah, to get it in yeah minute, minute 30 to go. You know, the game might be over, but the, the Cavs, they have a lot to learn, and they want to use this time wisely, trying to get some more points on the board here. As this is Jonas McEwen from Shotgun. Sets his man in motion. Shuffle pass forward, Isaiah Gonzalez, and he's going to slip and trip and get down, get tackled at Number around eight. the 35-yard line. Is it dewy out there, Chris? <laughs> What's going on at the field? Yeah, the grass is a little slick here. It has uh, has some condensation on it, that's for sure. It's like Gonzalez on the run for the Cavaliers. Well, we do a temperature check. It's 69 <laughs> degrees and clear, so it has cooled off considerably tonight. Now in the 60s. 
cool, crisp night here in Winnemac, Indiana at Routabush Field. 45 to 14, under a minute to go. The Warriors are going to win this game, but the Cavs aren't giving up. They want to get points on the board before they hear that siren. Steps back to throw, deep pass down the middle, and it's overthrown. His intended target was number seven, Hayden Parker, the senior that stops the clock at 43.3 seconds. I'll tell you what, Chris, doing these games in Eastern time zone, they're a lot of fun. We're going to get out of here early, my man. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Right now, I'm just debating on whether or not I want Arby's to drink. <laughs> that's that's a tough real. decision. Yeah. You can't go to Arby's. They're not our sponsor. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Shane Lowry just asked me who's buying pizza tonight. Who's the buying Bills pizza? Basketball coach at Culver. There you I, go. I'm getting ready to tell him. I'm debating on Arby's or McDonald's. I'm having a, I'm having a battle right now internally. <laughs> Third and 12 for the Cavs. Ooh. Shuffle pass forward Isaiah Gonzalez, and he's tackled immediately in the backfield. Number 12, Pearson Wolford, the freshman. Another freshman out there as the clock continues to tick. You talk about pizza, Chris. You know, make sure to stop by Papa Farm Pizza after the game for fresh ingredients that separates their pizza from any others. That's Papa Farm Pizza, downtown Knox. Shout out to general manager Lenny Dessauer. He's probably slinging Zaz out the wazoo tonight as that's probably going to be the end of the ball game. I don't think the Cavs are going to try for another play as the final in this one will be 45-14. to The Winnemac Warriors put a big-time W in that win column as they get their first win of the 2023 campaign at home on homecoming. What a better way for it to end. We we're so glad you were here for us. We'll keep an, up. We'll keep an eye on other scores in our area as we get ready to go to the Collins Insurance post-game show. But while I've got you here, Justin, I wanted to say thank you for being here today. Hey, thank you. I hope we didn't scare you off. I hope it was something you thought it was fun and uh, we can make it, make it happen in the winter. Absolutely, for well, sure. We appreciate it. means a lot. Thanks for being here. Thanks, guys. For Justin Ruff and sports analyst Chris McGowan, I'm Mitch Columbi. You're listening to Kankakee Valley Broadcasting's WKVI. Yeah.